do you pass up the opportunity to spit blood in Joan Baez's face? Face, face, face. <laughs> Hey, what's happening, Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. Folks, uh, of course, I start the show on a Monday night, and then you can hear the uh, the helicopters in the distance. Can you hear them? It sounds like fucking apocalypse now outside my apartment window, which, which in Los Angeles, look, if you know anything about Los Angeles, if you saw Boys in the Hood, you know that there are helicopters circling all above the apartment buildings at all times looking for felons and villains, villains and felons, villains and felons, felons and villains at all times. They're trying to keep them in their scope, trying to get to shoot them down and make sure they didn't do any bad things. And I have to really worry about that because here's the thing, folks. I have an apartment, right, in an apartment building, but it's a courtyard apartment and there's, there's myriad ways to get in here. Like you can hop walls and jump fences. Like case in point, behind my building is a carport which you could actually scale the, the the ceiling of the carport or the roof of the carport and then jump in. But then there are a couple of fences that would keep you locked out of the carport itself. However, however, folks, behind my building, that's the carport. On the side of my building, however, there's a thin, narrow passageway. And it's a uh, there's a wall. It's a, there's like a retaining wall that separates me from the other apartment complex and their carport. So, uh, so all right, how do I explain this to you? Like, So if you were to jump, you, the only way to gain access to that thin, narrow passageway is, again, if you're a felon or a villain and you want to jump that wall and hide because it's a pretty good place to hide. And also, my fucking bedroom window and my bathroom window are over there and who knows who fucking climbs in here and does damage to me. Like, just say, just say somehow, somewhere in this town right now, let's call it Brentwood. Just say there's, uh, like, the ex-wife of former, uh, or not even former, about Los Angeles Ram running back Todd Gurley. Just say his ex-wife is in Brentwood and, uh, and she's having dinner and then she forgets her sunglasses at the restaurant. She goes home. And a waiter who's there, of course, calls her and says, hey, you left your sunglasses. Can I bring them over? And she says yes, because A, she wants her sunglasses and B, hey, kind of a cute waiter. You never know where this is going to go. So why not let him come by and say Todd Gurley gets wind of this. And then he uh, he just murders both of them. He kills the sunglasses guy. He kills the ex-wife uh, or the girlfriend or whatever his relationship to her was. And he leaves them just lying in a in a vicious, ugly pool of blood. And he's covered in it. Right. And then just say Todd Gurley has a safe house in my apartment building. Say he lives here in one of the apartments because there are 25 apartments here. So he could, 25, that seems, it's got to be 26, right? You couldn't have like an odd number of apartments. Jesus Christ, who built this building? But say there are, say he has a safe house here where he gets cleaned up after he murders his ex-girlfriends and their waiter delivery boys. And so he comes out through the back. And they're looking for him with the helicopters and he jumps over the retaining wall and boom, he smashes directly into my wall. And then all of a sudden I'm the fucking new ass Kato Kalen for 2019. How the fuck does that work out? I can't have that happening. Um, Unless I want to achieve that level of fame, because you know what? Kato Kalin is still fucking around. Can you believe that, dudes? Kato Kalin is like on Twitter and he gets he gets called to do like appearances at shit like he does. I think it is Comic Con. Man, that, that could be a bit much. That seems like a big one. Maybe he does like Milwaukee Con because that's another thing. He's like a Milwaukee dude. So he's a big fan of the Brewers and the and the he's like a super fan of Wisconsin teams. So I, which is just, it doesn't that tell you everything you need to know about fucking Wisconsin. Really? When you think about it, the Cato Kalin is their guy. Uh, and, and look, they haven't voted for him to be their guy. He made himself their guy. And then he gets retweeted by a bunch of fucking no. And look, every team has that fucking t- terrible fan base. Oh, bear fans. I mean, they're fucking awful. I mean, like a couple of weeks ago, like I didn't even talk about it in here because I didn't think you'd want to hear about it. And I don't blame you, but the bears lost in the playoffs a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, and I don't, did I cover this on here? I don't know. I've told enough people that I wonder if my theory is just out there in the ether and it's going to be stupid to say this. Bears fans, there is a contingent of Bears fans. There is a large group of Bear fans who would much rather be right about a situation and lose the game than be wrong and win and, and revel in the celebration. They'd rather be miserable and right than than incorrect and happy that they won. Because uh, they've been telling us all year that this kicker was going to fucking cost us a game in the playoffs. And sure enough, that kicker cost us a game in the playoffs. I wasn't happy about it. It was a drag. I, I And again, you know me. Remember week one when I said I let myself care too much? And then I started to come around a little bit. And and uh, I didn't live and die with the team because I'm 51 years old and I realized it doesn't make any fucking sense. And at any moment, Todd Gurley could jump a retaining wall and bump into my building. And all of a sudden, I'm Kato Kalen for the fucking 20th century, 21st century. Um... 
But Bear fans, you know, they predicted it all year. So then when he missed the kick, they marinated it. They were thrilled. We told you. We told you he'd miss that kick. We told you he was going to cost his team a fucking game. Fucking pay should have got a new fucking kicker. We fucking told you. And it's like, dudes, I don't. All the guys I went to school with on fucking social media are just like, yeah, we fucking told you, man. We fucking said that kicker was going to fucking blow it. And Max and I are just like, yeah, so? So fucking what? So guess go like and because David and I have the same fucking uh, attitude. Just like, well, I mean, David actually, David's worse than me because David thinks everything's a joke. I mean, he's just like fuck all these idiots. And I, I still have emotions. Like David does not. He's allowed to. He's allowed his emotions to get put on a shelf when it comes to social media. Like I can still, I do my best not to get worked up. I do my best not to dive headlong into this garbage. But uh. But David doesn't at all. David arms length the whole fucking thing and he'll make memes about it and just fucking taunt guys and he just he doesn't fucking care, man. And I don't know like I I can't be that cool about it. I can't be that guy. You know, I mean, I can distance myself and just be like, "What the fuck, man?" Uh, but then the worst is I'll call David, I'll be like, "Dude, can you fucking believe this?" And he's like, "Yeah, so what?" And I'm just like, "No, I need you to marinate in the fucking hate with me just for one second. Can you can you talk about awful this?" He's like, "Yeah, it's awful, but it doesn't mean anything to your life or my life." And I'm like, "Ah, fuck you, voice of reason. How dare you? How dare you try to turn this against me? My emotions and my thoughts." Uh, but that's how David handles it. Again, to him, he's He's just bemused. He's like he's kind of this weary traveler who goes through social media and sees these dumb fucks doing the same. And look, I'm I'm the same way a lot of the time, but I also get invested and I try not to, but I do, and I don't want to, but I am. And I'm I'm just but it's much, much better. I will tell you that I'm much better than I was even six months ago. Six months ago, I'd be sitting here right now wondering what was going to happen to these kids and this guy playing the Indian drama at the Lincoln Memorial or whatever the fuck happened. And now I don't I don't whatever happens, happens. I, I will go ahead and gladly walk away. Now, look, I'd be happy to punch one of those people in the face and I let you guess which one. But I, I'm not going to go ahead and I'm not going to get specific about it. Um, but David can just like David just stares at it like, you know, who David is David's like fucking David Bowie and the man who fell to earth. He just kind of or, or even in Starman. He just kind of bemusedly stares at earthlings and the way they behave, and he just shakes his fucking head, and he's like, yeah, I don't even fucking, I'm not even part of this fucking planet of this species. You know, I'm going to raise two lovely kids and raise and then love my beautiful wife and be nice to my mom and, and play my music and just delve into my painting, and that's fucking what I'm going to take care of business doing. And, and I, I, dude, I envy that. You know what I mean? I wish there was a way I could crawl away, but I have that weird head. And I talked to Shannon about it today where it's like I, I, I have to keep my brain open to try to absorb information because it keeps me moving forward. That's my shark power is I have information and I constantly have information. I need to stay informed and on top of things. But even now, I find myself just kind of getting in a fetal position and not wanting to be involved in that kind of bullshit. It's like, no, nah, I can't. I fucking can't. So, oh, helicopters are gone. Todd Gurley has been caught. Ladies and gentlemen, Todd, I'm getting word. Hold on. I'm getting word. My finger is in my ear, of course, holding my earpiece. Tom Gur- Todd Gurley. Tom Gurley. I'm hearing Tom Gurley. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Tom Gurley. Good. Oh, thank God. Well, I'll tell you, the Rams Super Bowl chances would have taken a jump off a fucking cliff if it was Todd Gurley who was arrested. But I'm telling, I'm being told Tom Gurley has been arrested at his safe house here at my apartment building. Uh, well, good for you, Tom. I, I'm glad that you were able to take care of that waiter and your ex-girlfriend, but I'm sorry for your future. Although, I guess... All this really means is that you're going to be found innocent in about 18 months, and then you'll go ahead and rob somebody in Las Vegas. OJ's free, right? You know what? I don't have to make Tom Gurley the villain in this story. What if OJ did it? What if he's got a safe house in my apartment building? Holy fuck. I forgot that that guy's out and about. And I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, man. I would have never, I would have, in a million years, I wouldn't have guessed that he would be the one who went away. You know what I mean? He struck me as the kind of guy who, when he got, because he just got out of jail in Vegas. It was probably even a year ago now that I'm thinking about it. And when he got out, everybody was just like, oh, yeah, here comes OJ. It's going to be fucking amazing. And that is a dude who has just fucking gone completely underground and 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 should. You know what I mean? Because nobody wants to fucking see you. You're a murderer. Nobody wants to talk to you, play golf with you, whatever the fuck you want to do with your life. Um I'm sure there's a mo- there's there's got to be some people who love him still. You know what I mean? His kids and and I'm sure there's a Kardashian or two who has an affection for him at some point. Hey, by the way, get this. I got a text today for some reason on my phone. And let me warn you about my phone too. Uh, it may make a noise during this because I can't figure out how to turn the noises off on my phone anymore. I am I could not be more old. I could not be dudes. I, I'm I'm st- I'm in a race with my mom to see who's more out of touch. I and and I look. I know I'm she's winning clearly because I tried to explain something to her. And it and it was going fucking nowhere, man. I I just uh, all right, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. So first of all, let's talk about this. There, I, I'm getting texts for someone named Altisa, A L T H I S A. I don't know why they think that this is her number or his number. I don't know, but I keep getting these texts, and they're getting progressively weirder. Like it was stuff like, Altisa, did you want to try to have a seminar? Contact us at this number. 
And I'm like, all right, well, that's benign and harmless, whatever the fuck. But today's, and I will actually read it to you because this, I kept it on my phone because I was like, you're fucking shitting me. This isn't a real thing, but it is. This is the text that came for Altisa today. Oh, I'm sorry. Artisa, A-R-T-H-I-S-A. So again, like I said, it started with stuff and this has been going on for eight months. And it was something like, you know, like I said, there's a seminar that you can go ahead and attend today. Would you like to? And then it was like, Arteza, hats are on sale. Come and pick out the best looking chapeau for you and your significant other. You know, normal shit like that. Today's Arteza. The Kardashians secretly slip these pills into their men's drinks to get them erect 24 hours a day. <laughs> and it's got a link. And I don't, look, I, here's the thing. Unpack this fucking thing. I don't know if this is a link for the Kardashians. I don't know if this is a link for their pills. I don't know if this is a link for photos of their men erect 24 hours a day. And, and what men are we talking about here? We're talking about Kanye, obviously. Uh, we're talking about Ye. We're talking about Yeezy. And and uh, and, and look, I will, I'll be honest with you. If anybody in that family needs pills slipped into his drink, it's going to be Yeezy. That's who I'm voting on. That's the guy you should really give some pills at some point, get his bullshit under control. I wouldn't say dick pills would be the best move. Uh, but still, if, that, if you're going to go ahead and poison anybody in that family, not poison, just a... Uh, uh, gently drug? <laughs> Do you gently? Can you gently drug somebody? I'm sure a fucking sorority would tell you that they'd been gently drugged at some point. A fraternity would tell you that all they do is gently drug people. But I, I refuse to speculate that you can gently drug anybody. But uh, but I don't. So I don't know if that's a photo of the erect people or if that's a photo for me to obtain the pills. And also, what an odd endorsement. Like, are the Kardashians that powerful that they think I will? Like, like if someone sent you a text and they were like, "All right, these pills will keep your men erect 24 hours a day." Would you just look at it and go, doubtful, never happen, scoff. But then they send the very next text and they're like, hey, the Kardashians use these pills to keep their men erect 24 hours a day. And you're going to go, well, fuck, if the Kardashians on board, I absolutely have to get these pills. And I got news for you. I've seen all of those sisters. I've seen all of those ladies. I've seen a Kylie. I've seen a Courtney. I've seen a Kim. I've seen a Cuckoo. I've seen a Cabana Banna. And whatever the fuck the Kardashian sisters names are, I've seen them all. I got to say, there's only one of them who would really need to have these pills in her pocket at any given time. I, and I don't want to, I'm not speculating. I'm not trying to be that guy. Uh, it doesn't look like Kim would have any problem with uh, her, her men getting erect. And I don't think Courtney would have any problem with it. And I, I don't think that uh, uh, Kylie, uh, m- maybe Chris. And, and look, I, I met one of these girls. I talked to her face to face, basically. <laughs> and when I say I talked to her, I talked at her, and then they rolled a window up in my face. All right, so it wasn't me. And I saw Kim come out, come out of a building once, and that was like, that was like citing uh, a, a, a Pornhub unicorn. That was crazy to see her because she was just shiny as fuck. So, I mean, I have seen them being in Los Angeles, but now I'm getting, now I'm in the text radar. Again, like I said, who, who falls from, is the Kardashian, is that the one that gets you to buy the dick pills? Fuck dick pills. I don't need them. Fuck my cock and my man's cock. And they're like, well, the Kardashians use them. Hold on a second. Where do I send the check? You're telling me that Chris and Chloe go ahead and drop these in somebody's drink and he's got a heart on all fucking day. I am on board. I don't, they don't need to be fucking feeding dick pills to anybody. And, and believe me, uh, who's, who am I thinking of? Courtney? No, it's not, I talked about Courtney. Chloe's the one. Yeah. She's the fucking, uh, um, she might need him, right? She's the, she's the one I talked to in the car. She's the one who looks like a, uh, uh, well, not anymore. Now she's going under like some kind of like, it's like they, they put her in a Kardashian circle. I imagine they do Kardashian circles where they all huddle up, huddle up Kardashians. And they get in a huddle and they go, look, then like, Chloe, you need, uh, you need to be shinier. She's like, what are you talking about? And they're like, you need to be shinier. You know, we're all walking through the street and you look like fucking Chewbacca. Like, what the fuck happened to you, man? Seriously, it looks like we look like Leia, Luke, and Han, all thuggish and rakish and good looking. And then you're here looking like fucking Chewy. Go, go get the burrs coming out of your hair and fucking join the club here. Join the family. We need you in the goddamn family, baby. Or Kylie's going to take your place. You know what? We're going to gently drug you and put you in a hole somewhere. And then no one's ever going to hear from you again. And we're just going to, no, no, Kylie's Chloe. Chloe's Kylie. Kylie is Chloe. This is not the Chloe you're looking for. This is Kylie. What's Chloe? What happened to her? Well, what are you talking about? She may have run off to the Himalayas to her natural habitat where she can live on berries and stray hunters. <laughs> Holy fuck. Where she can get photographed walking away from the camera in a blurry fashion because she gets photographed all the time. She's got fucking total practice at that. But if you throw her out in the woods and she gets all burry and fucking crazy hairy, she'll totally stride away from the camera because she's used to paparazzi. She could be a Sasquatch. And I, you know, there's two ways to say that she could be a Sasquatch and she could be a Sasquatch. So, I mean, either way, wherever you put the inflection that in that sentence, you're right both ways. She could be a Sasquatch. She could be a Sasquatch. 
That's that's the that's how I feel about Chloe, and I'm sure that's how the family feels about Chloe. That's how they made it happen for fuck's sake. Because why not? Go ahead and throw out in the woods. Go just yeah. We uh, you know, we're about to have a dick pill endorsement, and you were going to be the one guy, uh, the one the one Kardashian sister who we even we feed the pills to Lamar, and he's not even going to get it up. Maybe that happened to Lamar. He was the test pattern. He was the guy when he was banging her, and Chris. You no, know, wasn't Chris Humphries was with Kim. See, I can't keep track. They've, you know, they fucking ran a train on the entire NBA, for fuck's sake. Who the fuck do I keep track of? Lamar. Lamar was the dude who banged Chloe, right? And then all of a sudden, he winds up laying in a pool of his own vomit and seven hookers. And, uh, and, and my, here's my favorite part. People are like, they blame the... Look, the Kardashians, one way or the other, they got the blame for that. And there's no reason. Lamar is still a fucking... Uh, he's a banana head. I mean, he was a banana head when he was in college. But uh, but he got all tied... And look, I know your ex can fuck your head up. Trust me. I, I, I know all about that. But, but as far as seven hookers and a pile of vomit, that just... Uh, other than being a great line for a, a future Beck song, that is no way to end up. And I don't, I don't blame the Kardashians because you were destined to wind up there, buddy. If that's if that's how you handle your business. Although again, if I, if they were force feeding him the pills, if they were saying, hey, you know what, we got these dick pills, let's give them all to Lamar and see if we can get him hard and see what the fuck happens. He just got used to taking pills all goddamn day, and that's why he got all fucking banged out. And then he winds up in a whorehouse, face down in his own vomit, with seven hookers trying to revive him. Like I got to tell you, man, if you're gonna pass out to pull your own vomit. I just don't think that the Bunny Ranch is the place to fucking make it happen. That's that's not the place because you're not going to get saved. Do you think? Let's hookers know a lot of shit. I've never just seen CPR on the menu. I don't. I don't think if you go to a brothel, there's going to be. It's because you're going to get like you know uh, an underground hammer with a pogo swirl, and you're going to get a fucking backdoor penguin. You're going to get all that shit, but you're certainly not going to get a fucking CPR lesson from Daisy or Sunny. Or, or fucking whoever the fuck, Cinnamon, any of those chicks they got working there. Or wi- Wild Annie, or what the fuck, An- An- Ample Annie, who the fuck was there? I just, uh, Air Force Annie, that's who it fucking was. Little little Anal Annie, I think, well, who did I grow up with? No, no, because there's, of course, Little Orphan Annie, but, oh, Little Oral Annie. There was a there was a porn star named Little Oral Annie when I was a kid, and uh, she, you know, guess what she did? Guess what her specialty was? You're exactly right. She worked only with little people. <laughs> she worked with midgets. <laughs> she, she, look, I only fuck midgets. She strode right into the office of Porn Inc., and she walked right up to the main guy and goes, listen to me. I have skills that you wouldn't fucking believe, but I can only throat midgets. And they said, you're in. Perfect. We've been looking for somebody to throat these midgets. And then they opened up a door and there was a hundred midgets. <laughs> they were there for a porn tryout. And then little Laura Lanny strides in on the perfect day. They could get the love. They're trying to find somebody to throat these midgets. And they're talking to everybody back then. They're talking to fucking uh, Amber Lynn. They're talking to Ginger Lynn. They're talking to Loretta Lynn, seeing who wants to throat these midgets. And nobody, they're all like, fuck that. We can't throat these midgets. And out of nowhere, in strides little Laura Lanny, opens her mouth and says, <laughs> All right, make a midget pyramid and come all over me. Just fucking, just coat me in your midget spunk. Let's make this happen. And she ran a train on the midgets. Or I guess the, they, they kind of, they run a train on her, really, when you think about it. It's, uh, that, you know, but unfortunately, you know, it's the, uh, it's more of a trolley, really, with the midgets. I'm going to be, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I can't say the midgets ran a train. They, man, they ran more of a streetcar, more of a trolley. Um, <laughs> it would be it would be more of a uh, like an L train, I guess. Really, it's not a locomotive. There's no locomotive involved in the midget train. Um, all right, so what are we talking about? We're talking about dick pills with the Kardashians, of course, because as we are wont to do, it's January. That's what comes up all the time when it's cold outside. You're a young man's fancy. You know, spring, a young man's fancy turns to love, but in the in the winter, a young man's fancy turns to dick pills and the Kardashians. That's what comes up immediately whenever you think about it. And Kato Kalin, who I think we mentioned earlier. Uh, although did we did we even mention Kato Kalin? I, I I think I referred to a Kato Kalin situation with our friend Tom Gurley, who got arrested here in my apartment complex. All right, my phone. In addition to sending me texts that are for uh, Artisa, who apparently needs to know about what pills the Kardashians use to feed their their men and and get them hard, um, I just just that that endorsement is because I mean you'll get stuff all the time where it'll be like the Kardashians love these shoes. Hey, did you know the Kardashians love persimmons? And you're like, holy fuck, I could eat all the persimmons in the world because I'll totally look like Kim or fucking Courtney or whatever. But dick pills, that just seems that seems antithetical. To what the Kardashians are selling, they're basically selling their big asses and going, "Hey, everybody will be hard for us forever." Uh, if you're saying you got to find pills to feed guys by the shovelful to get them, get it up for you, that just that just seems like a real whiff, uh, and also not true. Let's be honest; these these Kardashians inspire uh, erections in all, men from all over the universe, in all spectrums, all colors of the rainbow can get hard for the Kardashians. They don't need a mouthful of pills. Another reason for me to just fucking disrespect and disbelieve this text, and also. I feel happy about the fact that I'm getting them and not Arteza because who knows what Arteza would think. Arteza may read that and go, fuck yeah, I got to send these guys some money. And then it just perpetuates the myth that the Kardashians got to drug their men to get it up. 
And uh, and we can't have that. We can't have that as a society. I put it to you, Greg. <laughs> um, my phone keeps making noises, and I don't care for that, quite frankly. I don't know how to turn it off. I will tell you that. That's a thing that I don't understand. It's a... Uh, it, it uh, all right. Look, it stopped making noises for the longest time, and I thought I, I accidentally put it on like that. With an iPhone, you can put a moon on, and it, when the moon's on, it doesn't play any songs. Uh, it doesn't play like any any because uh, I only have uh, there are only like four people in my phone who have a a, a ringtone. Okay, one of them is I don't you know I don't hear from anymore. Uh, the second person was my cleaning lady. Because I have to, they have to buzz me at the gate, so I have to know she's here. So she has to text me, and if I hear her song, I know she's here to come in and clean my apartment. Um, because you can't buzz me from the front because I don't have a landline anymore because it's 2019. And the third person is my trainer, John, at the gym. Because just in case uh, he has to cancel in the morning, or just in case I oversleep, I will hear his little song play, and I'm like, I can either be like, yay, he canceled, or fuck, I gotta get up. Um, but But I don't, so the thing is, when I'm not at the gym with him, it's still assigned to his name. So we'll text sometimes about football or movies or that kind of thing because John's my friend. I'm, I'm comfortable in saying that. I don't know if he'd be as comfortable saying it as I am, but still, I'm going to go ahead and advance that theory that he and I have become close. Uh, close, and we're friends, but uh, why, did I, why did I make him close? All of a sudden, he's a close friend? He's my best friend in the world. John and I are married. I don't know if I mentioned this to you. You know, as a matter of fact, John's a waiter in Brentwood. I went there for dinner, and uh, one thing led to another, and here's what happened. I've got my sunglasses back, and I've got a man that I can cherish. Uh, so he, he sends me a, he was the guy like last week when I was on here, I think. And I said, Oh fuck, my phone's making noise. Um, because that's who texted me. You heard it go like, but ding because I made it even shorter because it used to be like a fucking jingle jangle song. Uh, but now I've just made it like a little, a little breath of spring. It's, it's the, almost the sound you would hear if somebody smiled in an old timey cartoon ding. Or it's the sound you would hear if someone scrubbed detergent or or stain remover into a stain and then it came out of the washer. But it's like that. Uh, it's just a, a, a tiny hint of a sound that indicates that John has tried to get a hold of me. However, it stopped. Like it stopped for a, a couple weeks, and I, I was I kept texting him. And I'm like, dude, I don't, I can't, you know. I, and also, my his texts, all texts, stopped lighting up the screen. So like I usually if I get a text, my screen lights up and it says, you know, I get, there's a text there and I got to tap on it to read it. But now that even stopped. Like I wasn't being told there were texts until I picked up my phone and there was no song, no sounds playing with anybody's text. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? This is a drag. So I couldn't figure out how to do it. I didn't, I checked to see if I had the moon on and I didn't think I had the moon on, but I turned the moon on and I turned the moon off. Um, and then I kept trying to figure out ways to do it. All these different fucking things, all these theories. I was talking to people about, and they're like, do this, do that. And I Googled it and fuck. Finally, last week, I just, uh, I turned my phone off. <laughs> I just rebooted my phone and guess what? Everything's fine. Uh, all the songs are back intact and all of the fucking the, the texts light up my screen and everything's going on and I can see it, everything, hear everything. And I'm happy except for the fact that, um, I can't, uh, I can't turn it off. <laughs> I, I wish I could. I don't, I don't know what to do. And I, I stare at my phone and, and I fumble around with it in my hand, like a fucking chump. You know what I mean? Where I'm just like, well, I could turn this off. What if I turn this off during the day? But then I turn it on when I went at night and maybe I'll hear his noise later. Then I won't hear his noise then. Cause I mean, the ringer is off on my phone. Like right now I, I always turn the ringer off when I go see Shannon or I turn the ringer off when I'm twitching or I turn the phone off, uh, the ringer off when I'm here talking to you guys. But even with the phone off, I had it off last week and you heard the, but I mean, I'm getting the text tones that are still playing with people. So uh, if, if you hear, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, John's texting me. And if you hear um, like a ding, 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 like a banjo sound, ding, 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 you know that uh, Daisy's here to clean my apartment, which would be weird because I haven't made an appointment with her. If you hear a country music song, call the cops because I'm probably going to drop and faint dead right here in my goddamn chair because uh, I'm not expecting that at all. Um, but yeah, so I can't figure the phone out. So I mean, I don't, so now the music plays all the time. And now, so I'm warning you that at some point there might be a song that plays here during this uh, broadcast and I don't want it to play. I certainly don't. But, uh, but at the same time, it, it's, you know, I, ah, this is how I have to handle my business now, folks. I'm an old person. That's how old people do it. They, they see something, they try to fix it once or twice and then they go, fuck it. This is what I got to live with. That's why, you know, when you walk into an old person's house and they used to have a VCR and the, the, the clock was just blink, blinking at 12 o'clock. Oh, Jesus. Try to explain that. I mean, fixing it is one thing because you can set the clock, but then if it gets unplugged, it's 12 o'clock again. And then you come home you'd always, you ever go to your parents' house, or your aunt's house, and it's just blinking and you're like, oh, man, I I'll fix this. 
And then they don't, they, they understand that and yay. Oh my God, I didn't know how to do that. And then you come back and it's blinking again. Cause they unplay and you're like, it's in the same place. How the fuck did you, did you unplug your VCR? Do you unplug it every night? Like what happens? Like, are you, are you scared? Electricity will surge in? Or do you think, uh, the guy from shocker is going to come in the villain or whatever the fuck his name was? Uh, you got it, baby. That's a, if you've never seen shocker, that's a movie where a villain, like a guy who's on death row, uh, somehow draws, I think he draws a pentagram on the floor of his prison cell and he, he reaches the devil or some demon who turns him into living electricity. So he can actually, he can travel via power lines through outlets and things like that. It's, uh, it doesn't make a lot of fucking sense. I'm not going to lie to you, but it had like a heavy metal soundtrack. And I remember it was a big deal when it first came out for, you know, my age group and people like that because it had metal and it had, you know, like a killer and it was a uh, kind of, and then there was a, you know, he, it turns out there was a cop who was stalking him. They tried to kill the cop's family and, uh, but it's all electricity and whatever I did. I, I, in my brain, I seem to remember being entertained by the movie, but I also have to tell you, I don't think it was very good. I'm going to speculate. It was not very good. Um, but you know what? I'm, uh, lines are open now. Go ahead and listen. Watch it and call me. Give me a shout. I saw a movie yesterday. Oh, no, before I get into that, fuck. Um, yeah, talking about the VCR thing, I tried to explain. Here's what I had to explain to my mom because I had to send my mom some money. And uh, my mom's just like, write me a check. And I go, Mom, do you have PayPal or Venmo? And she's like, why? Well, I think I have PayPal. And I said, all right. I go, well, you know, Venmo is owned by PayPal. So just put Venmo on your phone. I'll Venmo you the money. Okay, how, how do you do it? I said, all right, we well, got to download it from the you know the iTunes the the app the store, and then when it's on there, you just sign up, and and I mean that sounds simple enough because that's exactly what you do. And also, we're of now I'm I'm Generation X. All right, well we'll call it the, you know that's what I supposedly am. Fifty one years old on the on the the but right near the tail end of it, uh, and then there's Generation Y, and then millennials and whatever the fuck everybody else is. I don't even know how many more there are, but there's there, you know, we grew up, I grew up with the internet showed up for me when I was 30, you know? So, I mean, uh, not even, no, no, a little earlier, like 25, 30. So I've known the internet, uh, and learned it. Like I adapted to it and I got, I got in early and I had America online and I learned how to use it and stuff like that. I'm not scared of the internet. So I know you don't open links that are sent to you by people you don't know. I know that you don't give out your, your passwords, all that shit. You know, you know, the general safety and all that kind of knowledge. Like I'm not fluent like millennials or people who were born after me who have grown up completely in the internet generation and they understand it and they get it. And that's why I told you, I'm always shocked when people are like really, you know, people will get in my, my car when I'm driving for Uber and they don't even look at me. Like they trust me implicitly. And I'm like, why would you ever trust me? I mean, I I grew up in a generation where you were, you know, stranger danger and don't fucking get in a guy's car. But now people get in the car. They don't even talk to me. They don't even fucking look at me. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, you are really inviting bad things to happen. You're lucky. I'm a good guy. (laughs) Cause I mean, I could just re wreak fucking havoc here. Um, but young people are trusting and they don't care. I told you young people are like, yeah, I'm not going to get a car. I'm just going to Uber and Lyft everywhere. I don't want to pay for car insurance. I don't want to pay for gas. I don't want to, it's just a weird, not weird. It's a different way to live and certainly different from the way I was brought up. And it can lead to me not understanding it, but I mean, that's, you know, fuck, I'm not going to be like, this is dumb or stupid or I don't give a fuck. Live the way you want to live. That's totally cool. Um, it's different for me. Like I said, when I was a kid, you wanted to get your car. You couldn't wait to be 16. So you get your car and drive away from your fucking parents. Well, now people live with their parents forever because you know, they don't want to venture out into the world. I'm saying they don't want to, I apologize. Let me take that back. They, they might not have the wherewithal or the means to do it. They got so many fucking saddled with college debts. They have to live at home and things like that. And if their parents are willing to let them, that's great. Um, um, but some people are able to move out and out on their own, whatever the fuck it, it just, people are staying, uh, with their parents a lot longer and it doesn't, and it seems like it doesn't bother them. When I was a kid, like I said, if you, you did not want to be living with your parents when you were fucking 20, I mean, you just wanted to get the fuck out 16. You couldn't wait to get your license and drive away 18. You wanted to go away to school or at least move out of the house. And that's, you know, I want to, I got pushed out at fucking 19. My mom's like, Hey, yeah, you gotta get the fuck out of here, man. So I fucking did. I bailed. I was lucky to have a landing place in California and go make that happen. And then just kind of blindly fump for my way through fucking life. And here we are. But, uh, but I learned about the internet and I, I was like, all right. I, so I was cautious about it, but I know about it. I know what to do. I know the right things. You don't, you know, download this, you know, whatever. Don't open shit. That's links. But there are other people who are fluent in it. Kids just, they fucking learned it in school. They knew how to do it. They know computers. They, whatever the fuck they're born coding. Good for them. But, uh, then you've got my mom who's 75 years old and I tried to tell my mom how to use, how to use Venmo and, uh, I, I, I'm like, download it. She goes, okay. She downloads it and she goes, what do I do now? And I go, all right, just fill out all the stuff. And she's like, oh yeah, I don't. All right. You know, I filled it out and it's not working. I'm like, my, you just, you got to put your bank information there. Well, I don't, I don't know about that. I go, mom, it's, 
it's safe. It's on your phone. It's, it's PayPal. Do you have PayPal? I think I do. Okay, well, it's, it's the same company. So if they have your bank information, well, I'm not so sure I have my bank information on PayPal. Mom, you have to. In order to sign up for PayPal, you got to have a credit card or a bank uh, something. Well, I don't. I, I, and dudes, it, it, that is the new blinking VCR. Trying to explain anything on, on, on a smartphone to a person over the age of 65. They don't, they don't understand it. You know, my mom's just like, well, how does this work? Well, how does it? Well, mom, guess you know how it works? You put it on your phone. I get your name. I push a button and you've got money. That's how it works. It's literally that easy. Yeah, but you know, there's got to be something here if they take your bank account. You know, I don't want them to have my bank account. Mom, they don't have your bank account. I, you know, I'll tell you what, sign up for it and do it and then delete it from your fucking phone after the one transfer. If I send you one, one thing, because I it just, and the thing is, I just don't want to send a fucking check. Because here's another thing. I, I talked to my mom and she's just like, all right, well, if you're going to send this, you got to do this. And she gives, there's like a four-step process. I'm like, Ma, look, can I just, I'll just mail it. She's like, well, no, because, you know, that that's not going to work. And you got to do this. You got to go over here for this now. And, you know, you got to call your aunt. Why do I have to call my aunt? Oh, Jesus. I'm writing a check. I mean, that's, I mean, it's, look, it's bad enough I'm writing a check. Again, that's, that is such a, to me, a, a, a 1970s or World War II or fucking whatever thing to do. I mean, I, I write three checks. One of I write four. No, now I write three. I write my rent check and I write two checks to Shannon a month because she does that for business. That's how she, cause I wanted to Venmo her. Even I go, you got a Venmo or a PayPal. Can I pay you? And she's just like, no, please just, I, I, I have to do it this way. And I'm sure it's for her LLC or whatever the fuck her business. But, uh, but, but with my mom, I'm just like, I just, I don't want to, who the fuck wants to write a check? I mean, I, uh, you know, literally the old joke is like, oh, it's 2019, but I'm still writing 2018 on my checks. No, no, it still doesn't. If it's 2019, I'm still writing 1985 on my checks. That, cause that's the last time it was viable. I write my rent check, which I have to, but Jesus fucking Christ, a check mom i don't even know look i'll be honest i don't even know if they make pens anymore my mom wants me to write a check i don't know if there's i I think ink has dried up i think there's no more ink in the world mom i don't think there's any way i could write you a check because again i think that entire system got pitched out the goddamn window um just let me push a button that's all i want to do and again you know that gets to me and who i am with the hassle of bullshit and trying to go well i don't want to do the math whatever the fuck because because again in order to you're going to laugh and i know you are but to send her a check I, you can't just send a check. I got to buy a card now. So now I got to go to fucking Rite Aid. And I got and now I got to find a card appropriate for my mom. It's not a birthday. It's not a Christmas. It's none of that bullshit. Um, and so then I got to find the right. And uh, yeah, But the, all the cards. And I hate buying cards. I fucking hate it. You know what I do? I buy cards that are blank inside. So then I can write something in there that I came up with. I'm, and that's not ego. And that's not arrogance. And that's not I can do it better than you. It's just that none of you were saying what I want to say. And the things you're saying are ridiculous. And you're also rhyming shit. I don't, I don't need... You know, don't rhyme curtain and certain. I don't need to do that to give somebody some money. I mean, it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? I, I, you know, it's funny when I first moved here, there was a greeting card company and I, and I almost took a job. Uh, and by, by a job, I mean, I almost signed up for freelance and what they wanted you to do, swear to God, they wanted me to submit 500 ideas for like birthday cards. It was 500. They wanted all these things, like to write out the pros and everything. They wanted me to write 500 different birthday cards. And then they would decide which ones they wanted and they would pay for them. But you had to give them 500. And I'm like, get fucking bombed. Are you fucking kidding me? Because to them, you were just writing, you know, four sentences. You know, you know, you know what your bullshit birthday card looks like. And they wanted you to write that kind of stuff. Well, still four sentences. To, that's, now you want 2000 sentences. Now you're basically commissioning me to write a piece for Esquire. I mean, what the fuck, man? Um, and you know me, I, 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 there's no, no exposure and no, we might buy this. Cause again, if you do fi- like, if I work for you, if I got to come up with 500 greeting cards on the best, I'm at my best pace. I got to f- say, I work, say, and I, look, this is, this is really stretching it. We're talking about back then. So I sort of still had a discipline and a work ethic thing happening very little, but I had it. So if you told me to sit down and I had to write 500 four sentence things, at my, at my very most productive, I could probably work four hours a day on that. And I would say that I could probably generate three an hour, maybe four, because they all have to be unique. So we'll just say three. I'm going to say three and that's optimal. That's optimal. I mean, I don't, I don't even think I could fucking do that. I'm, it's probably two, but I will optimally say three. So you figure I'm working four hours a day, three, a, three of those in, in an hour, that's 12 a day. So now you're looking at, that's a full month. That's a month of work that you, and, and, and more literally, uh, that, cause that's only three sixty. So you're looking at um, six, that's six weeks. 
You want six weeks worth of fucking work from me for free or, or for the hope that you would possibly pay me. Get the fuck out of here. Because when I first moved to town, man, I also, I had, you know, I told Karen, look, I will, I'll do what I can to make as much money as I can and make it work. Because I was, I was in LA and ready to hustle. Uh, I did, I phone, I did phone calls for man cow. I talked about that on here. I don't know if I ever did or I didn't, but I mean, I would call the man cow show and pretend to be somebody like, have you ever listened to shock jock shows? And they're like, we've got a guy here. And uh, he wants to say the N-word in his office. Let's go to him. Oh, my God. Is this true, sir? And then I'm the guy who has to defend saying N-word in the office. I, I was, the, you know, one of the times I was a gay guy who worked in an office and I was upset because they wouldn't let my husband come to celebrate my birthday when they bought a cake for me and I wanted my husband's name on the cake. Some bullshit fucking sketch. Something you would listen to and go, this isn't real. This never happened. But the thing with you know, that show, the Man Cow Show, is you know, they paid you. Uh, I think it was 25 bucks for an appearance or whatever the fuck. But the thing is you had to call right, right. First thing in the morning. So I, you know, so they're on at six in Chicago. I had to call at 4 a.m. Uh, not even at like quarter to four. So like, it, cause uh, they wanted me there. So they knew I was, and they lined up all the calls for man cow. And what they would do is they would put on a monitor, all of the people they had on hold. Cause they had an army of us and you had to sit there and wait until he took your call. And so, I mean, I sat there for three hours, man. You know, I'm, I, so I've got to be up. You know, I stayed up. Of course, you know me. I didn't go to bed. So I'm up at quarter to fucking four and I'm waiting and just sitting there until like seven o'clock. And then finally he takes my call because it's nine o'clock in Chicago because that's the thing is people are just now getting to their offices. So I guess he probably figured, well, people are in offices that relate to this more. Um, and it was for shit. I mean, it was it was a back and forth that took like four minutes. And uh, I did the best I could. And they want because they also wanted a stereotypical voice. And I mean, I, it was just fucking, you know, not... They didn't want me to mince. They didn't want me to lisp, but they wanted me to be, you know, effeminate. And I'm just like, I'm like, you, you listen to who you're talking to here. I mean, I can try it. I'll give you, a, I'll give it a shot for 25 bucks uh, because they were advertising here in the LA Weekly looking for improv actors. And I, I wound up calling like three different times or four different times. I only got on the air the one time, but I mean, it was just, it was so, I was hustling for all sorts of garbage. So that greeting card thing was another ad that I found. And they, again, that was one I did not even a fucking attempt because they wanted 500, 500 to choose from. Send us 500. Like, cause them, it proved that you were serious about the gig. Get the fuck out of here, serious about the fucking gig, man. Are you shitting me? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove to you guys that I'm serious about writing fucking goofy-ass greeting cards because they had such high turnover. That was the way, you know how businesses do this. They're like, we'll do it for exposure. We'll do it. Well, we want to take a look at your work and see if you're ready for this kind of work environment or if you'll fit in. It's like, man, fuck you. Hire me or don't. Fucking hire me or do not because I got no interest in fucking proving to you that I'm a guy who can get this done. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't even want to do it because that's, you know, and I'm sure that's the attitude they're trying to weed out, but I can write your garbage if you hire me and pay me to write your garbage. Don't make me jump through 500 hoops to prove to you that I can write my garbage when you could, you could do it in 10. If I sent you 10 greeting cards, you'd go, this is a guy we could hire 500. All you're doing at that point. So you got 10 people doing that. You're getting 5,000 free submissions that you can then own and use if you want. Because let me ask you this. Do you really think that if I submit you 500 things for your greeting card company and you hate all, you tell me, you tell me you hate all of them and uh, you won't buy any of them. Am I then going to hunt down all of the greeting cards you ever print for the rest of the year to see if my copyrighted work is in there? Fuck no. I don't give a flying fuck. I took a shot. I didn't get the job. We move on. But they've got 500 copies of my work that they can use for free because I signed an agreement that told them they could. So I couldn't even fucking make the plunge. I couldn't. Um, and, and look, I wanted to, I would have loved to, like I said, you hire me, I'll write your, hire me and I'll write your garbage, but I'm, I'm not writing your garbage for free. I do enough fucking shit for free. I don't need to fucking write your garbage for free for God's sakes. And I should say, I didn't have shit for free when I moved to town I not, you know, auditioning is free. All that shit, you know, go sit in on shows is free. Um, if I'm trying to make my brand work, I got no problem doing free stuff. Anything that will advance me in any particular way, I'm on board with it. However, if you want me to advance your company's name, pay me, motherfucker, because I will be the guy who fucking gets it done. Trying to explain to my mom how to use Venmo. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. I'm just like, mom, do this. Mom, no, no, please, mom, mom. All right, mom, hold on. Do you have the phone? Do you have the phone? All right, hold on to your phone. Just look at the phone. All right, I know you have me. You're you're talking to me, but can can you get to the screen where you look at the app? Mom, My, no, uh, yeah, just, all right, just close me out. Don't hang up. Mom, all right. And and I should tell you, my mom's not like a doddering fool. She's not like, well, I don't, I don't understand, Michael. I don't. No, my mom's like, fuck this. 
you know, this is just stupid. Like, why can't I just push this? And she's like me. She's got, she's got a ton of me in her where she's like, maybe I should do this. Well, I could do that. Well, how come I don't fucking do this? Well, you know what, Michael, get bombed. This is just fucking stupid. You know, I, I, why don't just write me a check? Just write me a check. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. I tried, man. I, and it's funny. I held out three times. I tried to talk her through Venmo. And she kept saying, you know what? I've got that Venmo on here, but it doesn't seem to be working. I'm like, Ma, you got to attach your bank account to it. Well, I don't, you know, I don't know if I trust these people with my bank information. Mom, it's PayPal. You got a PayPal, right? You know, I'll tell you what, Mom, you don't even have to use Venmo. You got PayPal? I'll use your PayPal. Yeah, I don't know if I'm, you know, I, last time I used that, I tried to buy something with it on, uh, on, on uh, QVC and I got locked out of it. I'm like, what do you mean you got locked out of your PayPal? She goes, well, I don't know. There's, I needed a password. And then there was like a security word. And I didn't know the security word. And so I just, ah, fuck all this. You know, I just, I just won't use the goddamn thing. You know, I'll just, I'll call them. I'm like, so what do you, so how do you use your PayPal? I don't, I don't. I mean, I just, it's there. I just can't figure out. I go, well, mom, you can go in and go to the site and reset your password and you, and, and reset your security word. Ah, you know, if I, I fuck that. If they just can't uh, accommodate me, you know, I don't understand why I got to go jump through. It's my money, Michael. My, my, I know it's your mom. I know it's your money. I know it is. Yeah, it's my money. So I, you know, if I'm supposed to push a button and it's there, but now you've got to make me tell you that it's, that it's my money. You've got, I've got to give you a safe word or a security password that tells you it's my money. I just, it's my money, Michael. My, I understand that. And, and it just, and round and round, but I mean, but you can hear the me in her. You can absolutely hear the me in her. Why the fuck do I got to give somebody a goddamn password to get access to my own fucking money? This is my money. I put it in there, motherfuckers. I mean, that's my mom. And I'm like, holy shit. That's me. That's me. It's that scene I told you about in Velvet Goldmine where Christian Bale's jumping up and down in front of a television set and he's like, this is me. This is me. You're fuck yeah, right, man. I'm an acorn. I have not fallen far from the goddamn grouch tree. <laughs> the motherfucking grouch tree. Oh, dude. That's where I got sprouted from. Don't kid yourselves. You might think that I didn't, but I'll tell you I did. <laughs> um, and yes, I did laugh there because I'm trying to write the time code down because I think the grouch tree should be the name of this fucking show. Um... So now you'll see that. See, I hate, I hate revealing. I hate it. It's like when I do Twitch now and I'm doing those video games and stuff, I, uh, I'll wind up, I, I, I refuse to leave the screen. Like I, I just, I won't leave the screen, man. And, uh, I've, I've, I've done like six and seven hour streams and people are like, what the fuck? Like, how are you, how are you able to do it this long? And I'm like, I don't know. And so the other day someone's like, has Mike ever gone to the bathroom during a stream? And, uh, and so everyone, someone's like, nope, he's here the whole fucking time. And, uh, and it's not, and I will tell you, it's not like I'm sitting here cross-legged, like, oh my God, I, uh, I got to use a bathroom. Ah, I'm not a child. Um, I, it's just something I've always been good at. Like that's always been a thing where I've never had to worry about running off to the bathroom or running off to do this or these other different things. Um, so I, I, uh, so when I do the stream, you know, I'll do a four hour, five hour, six hour stream and I'm drinking water the whole time. And it, and it, uh, it kind of, ba- I don't know if it baffles people or just, uh, it just makes people. Because, you know, I mean, a fucking, I, I just, I just, I got an iron bladder. I mean, I don't know what the fuck it is. I'm, I'm very lucky because I mean, I've talked to people I know that are Uber drivers. Uh, I had a buddy of mine, a guy, and he, he keeps a Gatorade bottle in the car. I'm like, what the fuck? Why? And he's like, well, if I have to take a leak, if, you know, I just want, I don't want to fucking run anywhere. If I got to take a piss, I just fucking grab the Gatorade bottle. I'm like, this is horrifying. Like, I mean, cause that means, cause now you're just, now you're just a piss chauffeur. Who the fuck wants to be that? Now you're just, you know, I've, I've, like I've said, I don't want to be a vomit chauffeur. I've thought about that all the fucking time, but now this, but you're driving your own fucking waste around. And he's like, well, no, I pull over and throw it out. And I go, all right, well, then you gotta have a litany of bottles. Like how the fuck does that work? If you're going to pull over and throw out the piss, then why don't you just pull over and find a fucking bathroom? And, uh, and he was driving in a city that didn't have a lot of places to stop. So I do get that. Like when I'm driving an Uber, there are certain places in my brain where I'm like, all right, I can go here, but a lot of fast food joints. Now they want to, you have to order food in order to use their bathroom, which to me is so demeaning and just so disrespectful. We're, we're, I'm a grown up man. I'm not going to go fuck up your bathroom, but for some reason they've decided that people are, and I bullshit. I take this back. Not for some reason they've decided, uh, for real life experiences. Cause I told you when I worked at the fucking barbecue house, a homeless dudes would go in there and take a shower. They would go take a shower inside the, they would basically just, you know, strip down in the bathroom and lock the door. And we only had one restroom for everybody. Um, or one men's room, I should say. And, and so I would just be like, what the fuck, man? So remember I had to go pound on the door and that dude walked out and he's fucking staring at me. I'm staring at him. And then he fucking shook my hand with a filthy hand and I boiled my hand afterwards. Fuck, but it had to happen. But, uh, but in Venice, you know, tons of places they you have to ask permission to use their bathroom. There's a code now. Everybody's putting a punch code on their door, but even worse is some places you got to pay. Like they want a quarter to use the bathroom or you have to go to the front counter and you have to order food in order to use their bathroom. And it's like, man, I, I mean, look, I, in theory, I understand it, 
Because quite frankly, you know, someone has to pay for the water. Someone has to put uh, the toilet paper and the paper towels in there. But to me, it was just the cost of doing business. You know, it's like when they banned plastic bags here in Los Angeles. You can't go to the grocery store and get plastic bags anymore unless you pay for them. And it's not plastic, it's paper. So they'll be like, hey, do you want, to, you want bags? And it's 10 cents. It's 10 cents a bag. Uh, so everybody brings their own grocery bags now, which is fine. Because, I mean, I again, I thought it was the cost of doing business. Now, the plastic bag thing is more of an environmental concern. So I get that. But the fact that they make you pay for these bags for 10 cents, these paper bags, it's just... You know, you're a grocery store. You, you for years this was the cost of doing business, but they found a way to cut the margins. And I've talked about grocery stores infinitely. I mean, I, I, I it was the first job I ever had in my life. It was a really good job for a kid to have, uh, and uh, and it was a really good job for like well, older people to have as cashiers because they had a union. They made a fucking set wage. They made good money, and you could actually support your kids. If you had a two income family, like say the wife went and worked twenty hours a week as a cashier, and the dad was an electrician or whatever the fuck, just you could make a good blue collar lifestyle and put your kids even through college if you wanted because you had union benefits you had all sorts of stuff it was health insurance it worked out pretty good and now i go to all of my fucking grocery stores here in los angeles and they all have self-checkout i mean they still have cashiers on duty but they'll have like three cashiers on duty and then they've got 10 or 12 or 15 fucking self-checkout kiosks and uh, they even got those at fucking mcdonald's now man it's like what the how the fuck how do you have that shit at mcdonald's i mean that's just disgusting like and, and the worst part is all the people are just standing around just fucking doing a whole lot of nothing. Just, you know, thumb up their ass watching you order your food and all they do is hand it to you. It's, it's, it's so inefficient and I don't understand it and I haven't figured it out yet and I don't know what they're doing. You know, you go to a McDonald's, they got a kiosk, you walk up to a window and now you get a fucking minority project yourself a goddamn quarter pounder. Push this button, get some precogs to approve it. You get some McNuggets. There's fucking Martha Plimpton with a shaved head and all of a sudden Colin Farrell's chasing you to the street and all you wanted to do was eat some sweet and sour sauce. What the fuck, man? But that's how the kiosk works. You punch this, you do this, and then there's a, a giant, uh, there's just employees standing around, duh, duh, and you're, they're handing you McNuggets. That's all they are. They're a delivery system now. They used to at least take your order and punch it in, and then people would cook it or whatever, punch a button and microwave the fuck out of it. But now you go in and again, dudes, I recognize how fucking old I sound in this show. I can't program my phone. I can't do this. I'm complaining about the inevitable march of fucking progress with kiosks. But you know what? This march of progress is destroying humanity i uh, that's a, that's an exaggeration i didn't i didn't mean to say that it's really eating up a lot of the lower classes and and making sure that they can't make the livings that they used to business has increased along the margins to where like i said they're charging for bags they're charging you to use the bathroom they're phasing out employees and it's just it's just in the greater good for the corporation but it fucks the worker it fucks it fu- you know there's it's funny you see these people that are like 15 for 15 like you know it, it should be a minimum wage of 15 dollars these kid people should get paid and fast food workers should get 15 dollars and i i see people all the time they're like fuck these fast food workers man you know that's not a fucking a career that's an entry level job and then you move on to your career well you know, maybe someone wants their career to be at McDonald's. Maybe they want to work at McDonald's. Maybe they like doing that. Maybe they're happy doing that. And then they go home and they play video games or whatever the fuck they do. And they live their life and they should get a living wage for it. They're still doing a fucking job. How dare you fucking decide how anybody should live their fucking life? Well, no, you should work at McDonald's, then quit and go on to a better job. Fuck that, man. Who the fuck are you to decide what people should do with their lives? Just because you handled a path that, that, that you wanted to do and you carved out your own way. And also... A lot of people wind up doing that job because they have to. It's it's a <clears throat> it's a fail safe. It's a safety net, man. It is it is. You know, say you can't. Say you get out of fucking college. Say you do that where you can't fucking wind up with a job where you go ahead and make the all the money you wanted to do or use your degree, and then you you get fucked because you can't because now all of the jobs have been outsourced to overseas. So people wind up working in retail. They wind up working in grocery stores or their kids putting themselves through college and they're getting those fucking jobs or their high school kids, whatever the fuck, anything you want to look at. And look, you're like, well, you just cut your own balls off by saying it's high school kids. Well, okay. Say a high school kid starts as a bagger at Ralph's. And then he's like, well, you know what? I don't want to go to college. I kind of like working here. I like the people I work with. And then he goes to checker and then he goes from checker to the produce. And then he goes from a produce section to assistant manager. And now he's running a supermarket because he wanted to, because he worked fucking hard. And it was something he wanted to do that appealed to him. It's the whole point of this country. Do the things you want to do that appeal to you. Don't, don't, you don't have to choose the path everybody has. Not everybody has the wherewithal to get accepted to college and then leave in four years with $171,000 worth of fucking debt. Just because you want to force people to take on that debt and have to pay it for the rest of their fucking lives. College works for some people. Very much. College works for a lot of people. But college is also a form of indentured servitude for people who wind up leaving and then they're saddled down by these debts. I remember my buddy Jeff, when he got out of college, he was just like obsessing. He's like, I got to get these debts paid off. This is something I got to do. The day he finally paid off his final student loan, man, we, I just, I hugged him. I was just like, fuck yeah, dude. 
He was proud. I was proud. I was happy for him. And by the way, that was X number of years after he'd left. It wasn't like it happened in a year, man. I have friends now. I have listeners to this show who are still paying fucking student debt in their 30s. It just exists. So if someone doesn't want to take that path, you can't bully them and point at them and go, oh, man, they should have fucking done that. Well, you shouldn't get that. You shouldn't get $15. That's one thing we got to stop doing in this country is deciding what the poor need to do with their lives. You know, if somebody wants to work at a grocery store, if that's all they can get, then they should be able to get a living wage. Why not take care of them? They're working hard. And if you're like, well, they're not working hard. Well, fuck you. You've never done it. I worked in a grocery store. You go out in the fucking minus four degree temperature and try to get all the carts and wrangle them and bring them in. And yeah, look, they defeat their own purpose when they hire a lot of special needs dudes. Cause that's happened to me a couple of times. I told you, I went to a fucking Ralph's and here they had, there's a dude, there was a bagger at my Ralph's who had one arm, one arm guys, guys missing a fucking arm, man. He's got a hook. <laughs> you got a hook and I'm going to put, you're going to, you know, fucking stab my oranges and put them in the bag. Fuck that, man. I don't want a grapefruit with a hook in it. Just terrible. But at the same time, I'm just like, well, what, can, what am I going to do? I don't know how this guy lost it. You know, he could have he could have lost it. He could have got high and put it in a wood chipper or he got it blown off in Iraq. I don't know what the fuck happened to him. All I know is he looks horribly uncomfortable bagging my groceries with one arm. But what am I going to do? Step in for him? It's that thing where like in National Lampoon's vacation when she's stirring the Kool-Aid with her whole fucking arm and he's just like, yeah, uh, Vicky, uh, uh, you know, Chevy wants to get in on it. I'm thinking the same thing. This guy's like smushing my bread and he's trying to just but you can't yell at him because you're like, oh, this guy. I mean, fuck. You know, he's having a hard enough time with my can of corn. This guy fucking stepped on an IED and lost a fucking limb. I can't fucking shout at this cat for putting my peas on top of my eggs. You fucking dick. Don't put my frozens in on top of my bread because then the bread gets wet and kind of squishy. But you can't yell at the fucking guy because he went ahead and took on the Taliban and then came to town and found the only job he could get was putting my Duncan Hines cake mix into a box and fucking stabbing a hole through it. God damn it. But then he bumped him up the checker. Now, look bagger you definitely need you can get away with one arm all right if you're if you're a bagger you can use one arm you're the slowest fucking bagger in the business but if you can get through with one arm but still at the same fucking time man as a checker you need two hands you just fucking need two hands no no offense fucking dustin hoffman and hook but i can't have you you know scanning my my vegetables and then trying to punch in lookup codes for vegetables and 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 not getting it done in in a timely fashion whenever i would be there there, you know, there was at my, at my grocery store, I think I told the story on here like a million years ago. There was, there was a checker named Mike who I didn't care for, who still works at that Ralph's. There was fucking Captain Hook. And then there was a guy that Tony, that fucking Karen loved. She'd like twirled her hair when she talked to him. It was like crazy because he was super nice and attentive to her. And she totally dug it and I could see it. So we'd always pick Tony's line. It was like, I like Tony. I got no problem with it. You know what I mean? And just Karen would giggle her ass off and just kind of like bat her eyes and whatever the fuck. It was cute. But, uh, but if you ever went to, like, even if there were four people in, in Mike's line, and there was nobody in fucking hooky's line. I'd be like, fuck this. I got to go into Mike's line. I can't. I don't like Mike. He's mousy. He bothers me. His hands look like they're clammy. I don't want him to put his sweaty hands on whatever the fuck I'm eating in the next three days. But at the same fucking time, better his clammy hands when I could rinse off a can of chunk pineapple or avocados have skin on them. They're not going to get clammy Mike disease on them. But if this motherfucker plummets his hook right through my avocado, then it's going to turn brown before I get home. Fuck you, dick. Grant, yeah, you removed the pit for me. Thanks. But I didn't want to use these today. Uh, and then I, I, you know, I, I've talked about the fact that when I was a kid, like, this is a bit I used to do on stage that I probably can't do on stage anymore. But when I was a kid, you know, b- bagger was a job you took pride in. You, you could be like, you know, cause again, I, I was happy to get that job because I was not working at a fast food place. All of my friends smelled like fucking grease. They smelled like cooking because they were working at fast food places and all that shit. Now look, they all worked together. So that was kind of the fun part of it. And I, I worked at jewel. I worked with fucking uh, Jeff and my buddy, Paul Stinza, but, um, but that was fine. And I made new friends. I actually opened up my horizons and made some new friends. I met a girl that I liked. It was really kind of a neat, fun thing. It was a whole new environment for me. And also, like I said, I took pride in it. I had to wear a tie. You know what I mean? Baggers had to dress up. You had to wear a tie at this fucking grocery store. I worked at a jewel grocery store. And so I would bag shit and then, uh, uh, and then go get carts and we had fun. But I mean, you know, when it's 99 degrees outside, you got to go get the fucking carts. and You're trying not to sweat through your fancy dress shirt. Uh, I defy you to do that job and tell me I'm making too much money for it. That's some backbreaking shit. And in the cold and in the heat and then, and also the parking lot was on a hill, which was badass. And we'd go there on Friday nights and we'd just fucking ride in the cart straight downhill and smash into the wall. That was totally fun. But when you were trying to do it yourself as a worker, you had to fucking finagle this line of carts. And we'd always do this thing where we'd try to, you know, you'd try to clear the lot. You'd try to do it all at once. 
You never wanted to fucking just make all multiple trips because you thought to yourself, because people are like, well, if I make multiple trips, I can stay outside longer. But if it was 99 fucking degrees and humid, like it was in Chicago, you just tried to put 31 carts into a line and just fucking and push them. <laughs> and you're just, you know, you're blocking everybody's way, but you didn't give a fuck because you were getting it done. You were just fucking. And also it became a matter of pride and competition between the baggers to see who can get the most fucking carts. Stenza was a small guy, but he can get like 11, 12, 14. I can get like 15, 16. Jeff too. I mean, it was just, it was beautiful. You just collected as many as you could and you fucking, and you try to run and do it fast. We'd have a contest. It was totally great working with friends and doing that job. And like I said, you could take a little bit of pride in it because you, again, you weren't a tie. You're working in a grocery store. You're working with people. You're helping people. You're being nice. And it's just, you had a little bit of respect. It was fun. It was also my first job ever. So I felt great about it. Now I go to these stores and, uh, and again, like I said, they hired, they hired hooky to be a fucking bagger. They hired, they hire, there was a kid with down syndrome who was bagging at my grocery store. And I, I just, uh, it just took all the wind out of my sails as to how I used to perceive that job. Because again, like I said, I thought I was doing something. I would, I would, you know, I would speed up and bag the shit as fast as I could. I always prided myself and everything in the boxes and fucking stacked up and eggs on the top and bread on the top. And when I had to call for help, I'd be like grocery customer assistance. Well, that's a, that's a lie. I actually, I hammed it up. I think I talked about this on the show. There would be a hanging microphone and everybody would let me do the call. Every checker, every bagger would go, Schmitty, go ahead and do it. So I would take the microphone and say, so say we needed a price check or something. <clears throat> I would grab the microphone. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it the way I would do it. I grab the microphone. This went all over the entire store. Grocery. Customer assistance on two. Grocery on two. I, I just, I had, because I told you, I put, I had Gumby in my pocket. I think I've covered this shit. Always, always, always. Um, but now I see that they hire these fucking waterheads to, to be bagging groceries and shit. And it's just like, oh man, I had a fucking, I actually thought I was somebody. I thought I was getting something done. And now here, you know, before it used to be, hey, sir, could you make sure that my eggs are on top and my bread is safe? And now it's like, hey, Corky, don't drool on my hiccup. All right, buddy. Seriously, no offense. Don't, don't slick up my sun chokes with your fucking secondhand corkiness. I can't have it, man. I'm going to go fry these things and eat the skins, motherfucker. Um... So I guess, so like I said, I'm cutting my own balls off when I tell you that it used to be a job with pride and you could pay people because they're working their way through because now they hire the worst of the, not even the worst. They hire guys who need a gig. Everybody needs a gig. Down syndrome boy needs a gig. You know why? If only to give his parents a break. Seriously, that just, if you're giving, you know, give a Down syndrome kid a job because you know what you're doing? You're saving the world from the serial killers his parents would turn into. Give them an afternoon off for once just to take the heat off because that's got to be the roughest, toughest fucking job in the world. I can't even imagine raising a special needs kid. It would be fucking death for me. For you, if you're doing it, I fucking respect you in ways that I can't even fucking imagine. I can't, I can't stress to you enough how much I respect you for the amount of work and love you've shown in trying to raise the, that child to, to the best of your ability and make sure that they're happy and cared for. Because I told you, I see a, I see a Down syndrome kid. I just want to hug him, and I and I know that's that's inherent bias upon me. I'm sure that's some sort of uh, intelligence privilege, I guess is what we'd call it. But I mean, I I just want to hug them and tell them it's going to be okay. Everything's fine. I saw a video the other day where it was a, there was a kid with Down syndrome by a kid. I mean, he was like a 55 year old dude and, uh, and he wound up going to New York for the first time alone without his father. His father is 86 old gentleman. And the video is a, it's in, it's like a subway station or a train station and Down syndrome comes down the fucking, uh, escalator with his, his chaperones or his handlers, whatever. And he comes around the corner and there's his father and he runs to his dad and he just starts kissing him. Like he just starts hugging him and kissing him. And his dad's holding him and he's like, oh, how was your trip? How was it? I hope you, did you have fun? Did you have fun? And, and the boy's holding him and holding him and kissing him. And then, uh, and then he cut the, the father takes his head in his hands and he leans backwards and he looks him in the eyes and he goes, oh, you need to shave because the kid had scrub and you, the kid makes this face where he's like, oh, like this wide eye and open mouth. And then he, then he just hugs his dad even tighter. Like he just holds him like. It, it is so heartwarming. It is so touching. It is so unbelievable. It, it's, it's, it, it just, it just warms your heart because you know, again, that, that man did everything he could to let that boy know how loved he was. And, and that boy's now a man, obviously, clearly, but, but in his brain, he's, he's, he's a boy or whatever. I, I'm not gonna, I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to claim to know what fucking down syndrome does to you or whatever the fuck. All I know is it makes sure that you can't wear the right, the right size hat. That's all I fucking know about it. It's just, there's trouble afoot. If you've got down syndrome, there's trouble afoot. And so the parents, um, 
they're fucking heroes. Like they should, you know, that's like one of those things where I always talk about if I won the lottery, I would just, I would just get all the puppies and give them to all the kids. I would just do that. I would go to every orphanage and bring dogs. I would just, and all I'd say, here's a million dollars to buy food for the next 10 years or whatever the fuck. Um, but I would also do something for that. You would try to find families that had special needs, children and people who have worked and struggled and done everything they can to, to provide for, for people in need like that, just out of sheer love. And you would do the best you could to, to, to lighten their load, just lighten their load. And that's, and that's what we all should do. You know, when you talk about these people shouldn't make minimum wage, you shouldn't raise it because this is a fucking entry level job. You shouldn't be doing this kind of fucking stuff, man. Fuck you. Who the fuck are you to not lighten somebody's load? Take care of your fellow man. Maybe it'll be easier. Maybe they'll be nicer on the train. Maybe people will smile more often on the bus. Maybe people, when they're walking in the cold, they'll, they'll feel better about themselves because they're wearing new shoes and not trying to stretch out one more fucking month of these thin soled cardboard filled motherfuckers that they have to wear to their shit job because that's where life has put them. And look, I'm not saying everybody in the world has made the effort and not been rewarded. You know, I'm not saying that everybody in the world is out there working fucking hard. Yeah, man, there's a lot of scammers. There's a lot of people trying to get over. Case in point, people are texting me that the fucking Kardashians are feeding pills to their men to keep them hard 24 hours a day and expecting me to click on the link and fall for that mucking fucking shit. But I, I just, I, I was going to say motherfucking and I said mucking. I'm so mad and I don't want to edit it out because I'm rolling. Fuck. But man, you, you, you got to do what you can for people. You got to reach out and try to make sure that people are all right. There's nothing wrong with a helping hand and there's nothing wrong with, because again, people are like, oh, my taxes are, oh, this is going to go up, man. You pay taxes anyway. So, so what you pay another hundred bucks a year, 10 bucks a month to try to make sure that poor people have a little bit of a cushion and are taken care of in some fucking way. I don't, I, I was that poor person. I was on food stamps. I had the church bring me food. I don't understand why you wouldn't want to fucking reach out. I don't know why you wouldn't want to smile at somebody and help them and make sure that they were okay. Yeah. They're flipping fucking burgers. Yeah. They're pouring your coffee. Yeah, they're getting up at fucking three in the morning to go make your fucking donuts and realize that when you show up at eight o'clock on the way to your office job to buy donuts, those motherfuckers have been in there since three needing dough and fucking boiling coffee and dealing with people who are grouchy because they're on their way to work in the morning and they don't realize these people are already at fucking work and have been there for five fucking hours. There's nothing wrong with taking care of people. Nothing wrong with making sure that people's burden is lightened. There's nothing wrong with reaching out and hoping you can do whatever you can to make sure that somebody knows that they are needed and wanted and respected. And that's why when I talked about you go into these joints, when you got to pay to go to the bathroom and shit, it's like, man, that's such a fucking drag. It drives me crazy. And maybe that, you know what? Maybe the disrespect of it all is what led me to not be able to have to use the bathroom in such crazy circumstances. Um, you know, maybe, maybe that's what led me to not have to, uh, to do that. My body, maybe my body's just rebelling against disrespect and has decided to go ahead and go into business for itself. Who knows? Cause I'll tell you what it's happened. I've, I look, I, I won't tell you, oh, fuck, I'll just tell you. It, it's, it's happened a couple of times to me when I've been out Ubering where I, you know, I'll push it to the limit and I need to hit the head and I do, and I don't want to piss outside because the world's not my fucking toilet. So I'll try to go and I'll try to, you know, I know there's grocery stores I can hit. Sometimes you got to go to a fast food joint. Um, but one time I was in Koreatown, I was down in Koreatown and I stopped at an El Pollo Loco. They were open. I could see there were people inside eating and it was 10 o'clock. They usually close at 10. There's one by me that closes at 11. So I'm like, all right, maybe this is one of the 11 o'clock ones. And I mean, I'm, I'm in a way. All right. I mean, there's, there's a bit of a pep in my step. I'm walking with purpose, walking with purpose, walking with purpose. I've got to get in there and probably use their bathroom and I'm excited. And if look, and you know what, it's one of those things where normally I don't even want to fuck with these guys where I'll just be like, fuck this. I mean, I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to do this, but you know what? I can get a fucking chicken leg for a dollar fifty nine. So if I can get a chicken leg and go use the head, that's fine with me. Because everybody, you know, put a little protein in your body. It's nothing wrong with eating it. So I go to this El Pollo Loco. I walk in. Like I said, there's three tables of people eating, and I, you know, you see that thing. You just kind of casually walk to the door. And I grab it. I go to open it, and chung chung, it fucking it makes that noise. It won't open. It's locked. And I look in, and there's a person behind the counter, and he just shakes his head no. And I look around to see there's a sign with hours, and I'm like, well, no, there isn't. So I mean, I, they're open because there are fucking people in there. So I pull the door again. Kung kung. And he looks at me and he just kind of like, he, he just kind of shakes his head and then walks away. So the people are eating and they look at me and they, and I just like, Hey, I motioned them to come open the door. And they of course immediately look, stare down at their fucking chicken burritos. And I'm like, you fucking assholes. Just let me in the goddamn door. I, and also, you know, I'm not in a fucking trench coat. I'm not Dylan Klebold. Let me in to fucking use the bathroom. All right. I mean, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm six, two, I'm 350. I'm probably a guy who looks like he could do some damage if he wanted to, but I'm not trying to do any damage. I'm just trying to come into a nice chicken restaurant and enjoy myself in some way. I just want a chicken leg. I want to come in for a bite of protein and I want to swing my dick around and fucking take a leak. Is that okay? And, uh, 
sure enough, the fucking cashier guy I told you he walked away. Well, he comes back out with a manager. The manager walks over and uh, he does the, the slash thing over his throat. And I go, hey, man, I just need to use the bathroom. I'm not eating. He goes, we're closed. We, we don't have any more food. And he can hear me through the window. I can hear him. And I go, I said, I understand that. I don't need any food. I said, I just want to use the bathroom. And he goes, no, I, I can't help you. I go, dude, you can, you can hold my wallet. I go, seriously, there's people in there eating. I'm not causing trouble. I'm just coming in to use the bathroom. And I grabbed the door again. And I go, tung, tung, and it's locked. And, well, and I mean, but I figured the noise would punctuate what I was saying because I'm the best. And now he looks at me and he just kind of, then he gets closer to the door and he goes, no, I, I can't let you in. And I go, there's three people, groups of people eating your table. I go, I don't want your food. He goes, well, we don't have any food. I go, that's fine. I will use the bathroom and leave. I will be here 45 seconds. He goes, no, we're closed. I go, you're closed, but there are already people in there. I, you've got to, and now I'm arguing through a fucking glass door. And I said, look, can you just, well, I, dude, why are you arguing? There's people in there eating. They have to leave, right? You'll have to open the door to let them out. Well, yeah, but they're our last customers. I know they're your last customers. Just let me in to use the bathroom. All I want to do is use the bathroom and I'll walk out. I won't even be a customer. I'll just come in and I'll fucking, and he's like, all right, well, we were not, we're closed. I can't let you in. It's not, I go, but they're in now. Cause again, he's probably right, but I'm standing there. Uh, I, you know, I've been driving for five and a half hours. I need to hit the head and, um, and I, you know, I don't know where else to go. Cause again, I know certain places there's fucking grocery stores, whatever the fuck, but now I'm gonna have to get in the back of the car and search. And now, and I'm in a position where once you park and get out of the car, your mind then goes, all right, well, we're going to take care of this. I know it sounds fucking stupid and I'm sure it's an 11 year old's way of thinking, but like, I'm like, all right, well now I can, I'm going to be able to, I'm fine. My body, it lets its guard down a little bit. Like, you know, when I'm in the car, I'm fine. But if I'm like, man, you know what, man, it's a little urgency here. I should probably go ahead and get this taken care of. But then when you get out of the car, it's like, all right, good. We can relax. We're going to do this now. And, uh, and I've already yanked on the door four fucking times guy's right in my face and he's looking at me and I go, look, dude, there's people eating. Just let me in. I'll use the bathroom and leave He goes, I can't let you in. We're closed. Sorry. And he goes and turns his back on me and walks away. So, uh, so I grabbed the door and now I'm fucking pissed because I can't fucking believe he won't let me into his fucking restaurant. And, uh, look, you know me again, six, two, three fifty, and I can get angry and I can do things that aren't smart. And so I grabbed the door and look, I don't punch the window. I know you're thinking to yourself, Mike, did you punch the window? Of course I didn't punch the window. Why would I punch the window? This is like a dumb thing to do. Punch the window. No, here's what I did. I grabbed the handle of the door and instead of just trying to open it with purpose, I fucking yanked it as hard as I could. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the locks on fast food restaurants aren't exactly as effective as you think they would be, really. I, I don't know. Maybe there's a backup locking system. Maybe there's some other way for them to keep people out of their restaurant late at night. I don't know. Uh, well, I will tell you this. I should say they're not as effective. They do work. The locks on fast food doors do work, uh, at least partially. Because what happened was uh, I ripped the door open, but only on the bottom. It's a glass door. Picture a glass door that you use to enter an establishment. Uh, I grabbed the handle low. And so when I yanked it, I pulled the whole fucking bottom of the door out. The top remained locked. So all I did was bust it off the track and kind of bend the frame. (laughs) Cause I was fucking pissed, man. Let me in to use the bathroom. What the fuck is your problem? Cause again, disrespect in my head. I'm an adult. I'm not going to do anything bad. I'm not here to cause any mischief or mayhem. I will use your restroom and fucking leave. Um, and I know you want to go home. I'm not trying to get food. There's people already in there. If it was a fucking empty joint, I wouldn't have pushed the issue, but if there's people in there eating, you got to let them fucking out anyway. So let me the fuck in to use the head. And I yanked the fucking door and it just, it, it, uh, I'm going to assume it broke. That's what I'm going to guess. Or I just pulled the lock. Like, give me your closet door, go off the track, and it's kind of half on and half off. <laughs> yeah. I fucking pulled the door open, and the bottom half came a screen, you know, out, but the top part held. Good for the top part. I, I got to rally behind that top part. Good for it. Uh, but now I'm standing with my hand on the door, and it fucking in half, essentially. Like, it's it's bent out. I'm holding the bottom half out. And the whole restaurant, by the way, because it makes this noise, you know, the chung chung, remember that? It was like, it made this screeching metal on metal fucking noise. And then uh, I got to hear, you know, the inside of the restaurant with their mellow music and people eating a little mariachi action, a little mariachi fucking soundtrack for me tearing a door off the fucking track just so I can fucking take a leak. And uh, all of them immediately stare up at me and the manager staring at me with this face. They're terrified. That's the only word I can use. They freeze and they are terrified because now... The beast is almost in the be- the beast is almost inside. You can, you can absolutely see it on their faces. They're like, what the fuck do we do now, man? Uh, 
And I, I, I'm holding the door and it opens and I'm standing there staring at them and they're looking at me and they're terrified. They don't even move. And so then I let go of the door and it snaps back because I'm, I'm holding it. It's not, it's not like loose. I'm pulling it open. I'm in with, with, my, with my, all my strength. And so when I let it go, it just, kloom, it slams shut like a fucking, uh, you know, like a fridge door. And, and I just go in my head. I'm like, you need to get the fuck out of here, dude. Like right fucking now. Cause I mean, I'm in a, I'm in a, the center of Koreatown. Like, it's not like I'm in some suburb or I'm off where there are no people. Like if a cop comes by or he calls one, I'm fucking doomed, man. And I'll tell you what, uh, if four cops start hitting me with nightsticks, I'm not even concerned about that. Four cops can show up and beat the fuck out of me with their nightsticks. I'm more concerned with the fact that I would piss myself while it happened. You know what I mean? If I got an empty bladder, maybe I got to take that ass whooping. But no, it's just the embarrassment would be too much for me, man. So I fucking bail. I hop in my car and I ran. I just, you know, lights off. I just drive away. But now I got to get this taken care of. And in my head, I'm just like, well, is there a fucking alley or something? Because I don't want to go outside. I don't. Again, the world is not my toilet. I don't spit. I don't piss outside. I don't do any of that shit. But, uh, but it's, it's right now it's him or me. And you can best believe if it comes down to him or me, it sure as fuck isn't going to be me. I, I will piss in a dumpster. I will piss in an alley. I will piss in the middle of Wiltshire Boulevard if I have to, because I am not going to have piss soaked fucking pants. It's not going to happen. Never going to happen. Uh, so I'm like, I'm like, fuck, where am I going to go? It's Korea town. What am I going to do? I, and then I'm like, in my head, I'm like, well, there's a fucking McDonald's. I know there's a McDonald's I can hit. Um, but the Korea town McDonald's is, you know, it's, it's a, it's a giant McDonald's and it's th- this thing where there's always a line in the drive through. So you got to kind of finagle your way in and then you got to park, you got to run across. So I don't give a fuck. I, I, it wouldn't have mattered to me if there was a spaceship or a fucking, you know, an empty, a, a, like I said, I jump into a dumpster at this fucking point if I could. So I get to the McDonald's it's about a mile and a half away. I turn to the parking lot and I get out. And now again, I'm walking, I'm zipping man. And this Korea town McDonald's is just filled to bursting. Cause look, it's Korea town. So guess what? Koreans everywhere. And that's fine. Everybody's got to live somewhere. That's fantastic. I, I would, you know, I wouldn't expect anything less from the Koreans than to move to a place called Korea Town. Why wouldn't you? It's like if they if they had fat white guy town, I'm sure I would have looked for an apartment there the second I moved to town. Uh, but when I say Korea Town, like it, it's there are parts of it that are fancy and there are parts of it that appeal to youth, but there are also parts of it that are. You know, when I say there's Koreans, there's a lot of young Koreans who go and they support all the the Korean barbecue joints and all the nightclubs there. There's bars. There's it's a really great place to Uber and Lyft because it's a lot of young clientele and they're always moving. Uh, But also in Koreatown, you will get the people that have lived here since the 40s. You know, Korean families who came over and they never learned, you know, these generational families who have not learned English and they're old and they walk around with their basket trailing behind them and their babushka kind of wrapped on their head. You know, in Chicago, we've got the Polish people doing that. You know, you'll have a Polish neighborhood where it's all people speaking Polish or in in here by me, there's Russians in the Valley. They'll have a whole fucking neighborhood and Hispanics will have a neighborhood. You know, it's just, it's just the way of the world. You gather where your tribe gathers. But, uh, so like I said, there's tons of young people and a lot of, a lot of youth and a lot of money and a lot of people supporting like nightclubs. But then you go to these out of the way grocery stores, these out of way vegetable houses or markets or whatever. And there's, there's a lot of 95 year old Koreans who are, uh, who just, I'm sure they've seen it all. Like I can't even imagine the, the horrors they saw in the homeland and then they came over here. I don't even know, but they just look haunted. Uh, and so, you know, they, they all like, I, I look, I saw the host. I know what goes on in Korea. So I, I park in McDonald's and I go inside this Korean town, Korea town McDonald's. And it is filled. Oh, Cause also I will tell you this. It's not just Koreans, but because McDonald's has a dining room that's open. Some of them are here are open 24 hours, very few, but they will draw homeless people sitting at tables. Uh, you'll get young people just sitting there passing the day. You'll get homeless people sitting there just nursing a cup of coffee. And so when you walk in, you're being transported to this other world. Sometimes it's McDonald's. Sometimes it's a mission. And I walked in this particular night and the first person I saw was, it was a Korean woman and she, she had to be, I mean, she's got to be 85 if she's a day, just crepey skin hanging off of her face. And she's, she looks not only she an 85 year old woman, but she also looks like she has the homeless gene as well. Like she could, she could be, but I mean, as a Korean woman, I don't, I just think, I just think she was old and had nothing. There is something, you know, there are people like that. I read an article about Japan and Japan is having a real problem right now with the elderly people who, who are losing 
their their families or people are moving away and they have nothing. So they'll find old people just dead in their apartments after a month, like because nobody checks on them, nobody talks to them. It's a real problem there where they're having these issues where they'll have these giant housing complexes that in the 60s and 70s seemed modern, but now nobody wants to live in them because they are just these old haunted structures that young people wouldn't go fucking near if you paid them. And they can't get these older people out to renovate or change the building. So these old people are comfortable living there. They're dug in like ticks and then they wind up fucking dying and nobody, nobody can find them. They'll just, there'll be a smell. Literally the story said, you'll, you'll, when the smell hits you, they'll start taking inventory and going door to door. It's fucking frightening. So this woman looks like she may be alone and she's wrapped in three blankets. She has, she has slippers on. She's got a, you know, a, a kerchief over her head. She has a filthy cup of coffee that, that has, it's half full, but I mean, it just, it has to be the coldest. Like she, she looks like she's been sitting there since Y2K, like probably New Year's Eve, 1999. She walked in and sat down and then just people step, kept putting blankets over. You know, she is, she's the guy who had the singing frog. She looks like she walked into McDonald's and had a singing frog. And then somebody smashed the motherfucker. And now they just pour fucking coffee in her mouth and throw pretzels down her throat. Literally. She's just catatonic, man. Uh, she's sitting there wrapped in three blankets, slippers, kerchief on her head, half empty cup of coffee. That's filthy fingerprints and dirt. It looks gross. And a sandwich. Uh, it looked like it just a cheeseburger, but it had, you know, it had lettuce. So it might've been a fucking, it wasn't in a big Mac box, but it was in, it was on like a, on a wrapper and, uh, and it was taken apart. Like there was meat and, uh, and then the lettuce and then bun and the bun had a couple of bites out of it. And the burger had a couple of, so you, she's, she's just waiting to die, man. She's just in McDonald's nursing it, waiting to fucking die. And I, I was confronted with that when I walked in and I was just like, that is, you know, I, I, <laughs> I felt like Bill Murray in quick change where you walk in and his look and she's just there crouched over bent and aged and toothless old crone gumming a burger filthy coffee cup, slippers and blankets, mourning her frog. And in my head, I just went, it's, it's bad luck. Just seeing something like that. (laughs) Fucking Randy Quaid. (laughs) So I make my way past her. And again, I had to take a piss, but I still had to stop and marvel at this, this ode to aging, this ode to wasting away, this ode to loneliness at the counter. (laughs) Fucking walk past her. And the tables, and there's a, there's just a stench in the air because there's homeless people, man. It just, they're dirty and they smell like, they smell like copper and the street. You know what I mean? They smell like, they smell like urine and, and patheticness. I, 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 just, I don't even know how to fucking describe it. You know what I mean? Just like, they smell like unfulfilled potential and dirty parkas. I mean, I'm just, it's just awful. And they're all over. There's homeless dudes, like two in a booth, three in a booth. But then there's people with using the free Wi-Fi, like young, fresh faced people who are there with their laptops. And I just got to cut through this mass of humanity to get to the fucking head. So I go to the counter and I'm waiting to see if I can get a key. There's, there's like eight people in line at three different registers. No kiosks here, by the way, people are getting waited on. So I try to cut to the front and everybody just kind of like, there's a line. And I'm like, I know. And they're like, there's a line. And I, at this point I'm kind of in an emergency. So I figured the odds are pretty good that I can go there. And if someone's in the bathroom, because if it's this packed, there's going to be somebody in the bathroom when they walk out, I can just catch the fucking door. Even if it's locked, I don't fucking care. So I go to the back, I go to the bathroom and it is, it's locked. So I'm standing there waiting and, uh, and I, I've got to do the shift the kind of foot to foot, the left to right, the right, left to right, you know, the shift. And, uh, and I'm kind of rocking back and forth and I'm like, all right, all right. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's hustle. And, uh, I knock finally, I'm, I'm tired of waiting and I knock, give it a knock on the door, shifting back and forth. And I don't hear anything. I can hear noises in there, but I can't, you know, I, nobody says just a minute or anything. And people are looking at me because you know what? I'm a big dude and I'm kind of shifting back and forth and I'm leaning against the wall and I'm trying to, you know, cause it's, it's, we're, we're entering into what could possibly become an emergency situation in this to the point where like, if a woman walks out of the woman's room, I'm going in there. I'm not even going to fucking entertain any arguments. I'm going to go in and we're going to get it taken care of. And I'm going to get the fuck out of there. I'm not, you know, I just, it's just, we're at T minus, you know what? Fuck that. We're at P minus 15 at this point. We're at, we're at, <laughs> we're, we're at pecan 15, baby. Pecan four. Uh, and I'm, I'm just like shifting back and forth and ready to make it work. And I'm like, all right, I got to get in there. So then 
people are looking at me and they're talking amongst themselves and they're looking at me and they're kind of talking. And so then uh, nobody, there's, I hear a toilet flush. I'm like, fucking finally, finally toilet flushes. So I'm waiting there and a uh, toilet flushes and nobody comes out and I'm waiting for them. You know, cause then I got to wash their hands, look at the mirror, go, you know, Fonzie, comb your fucking hair, whatever the fuck. And, uh, and I'm waiting and then, uh, and nothing, nobody comes out. So now in my head, I go, well, this is a homeless guy having a shower because that's what they do. They fucking, they hit the head. They walk around naked. They clean themselves in the sink. So now I give it a, you know, a little more of a, I have a little more of a base in my knock to let them know that this is really something you should be fucking paying attention to. And if you're done in there, she's leave. And if you're not done, just open the goddamn door. Cause I know that there's more than one fucking toilet in there. I guarantee there's a urinal and a toilet and probably a sink and whatever the fuck let me in the motherfucker. Cause I'm about to ruin everybody's day out here because I'm going to fucking piss on everybody. You think, you think it smells like urine in here now? I'm about to really contribute to that shit. So get the fuck out of my way and open the goddamn door. And now another guy walks up and he stands behind me. And he goes, you wait. And I go, yeah, I'm waiting. And I go, and I, I go, look, you can come in here with me. I don't care. And he gives me this weird look. And I go, no, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I've knocked twice. I go, I've heard the toilet flush. And as I'm saying this, the toilet flushes again. And now I'm pissed because now I'm just figuring the guy's fucking with me and nobody comes out of the women's room and I'm sitting there staring at the fucking door and the door, you know, the flush is happening twice. And I'm sitting there and I look at this guy and I go, look, man, I don't know what the fuck's happening. And he goes, well, did you get a key? And I go, no, I didn't, I didn't get the key. I go, I didn't, I just, I went to the counter and I was just like, they were, they were hassled with food. So I'm just waiting for this guy to get out. But there's a guy here who's going to get out. He's going to be, I'm just waiting for him. And uh, he goes, all right, cool. And we're just waiting and I'm shifting back and forth and I'm getting to be at the point where I'm about to fucking explode and my bladder is going to blow up. And I already had an appendix almost blow up on me and I don't want all this shit in my fucking body. I'm going to die of a fucking sepsis shock. And then the fucking toilet flushes again. Third fucking time the toilet flushes. And I looked at the guy, and he goes, you heard that, right? And he goes, yeah. And I go, I'm not crazy, right? He goes, no, no, I, I heard it. And I go, okay, this is the third time this guy's flushed the fucking toilet. And I go, hey, I throw a fucking cop knock on now. I fucking, and to the point where the whole restaurant turns around and I'm around the corner, Korean woman can't see me, but I'm sure she thinks it's the authorities from the old country. And she ran out the goddamn door. That's gotta be the only thing that happened to her at that point. Because now I threw that cop knock on and I heard the fucking flushes three times and now nobody. And I go, hey, people are out here, man. It's been five minutes. Come on, get him. And I'm, now I'm yelling at a door. People are looking at me. Homeless people are staring. People are waking up because there were homeless people nodding off with their head down on the table because it's fucking nine o'clock. Oh no, it's fucking 10 o'clock, 10, 15 now. And, and they get their heads down and fucking I pound on the goddamn door and people are fucking starting to stir and they're getting a little weird because again, a giant person's getting angry. Nobody wants a giant person getting angry in their midst. And I'm trying not to get angry. I'm doing a very good job of it. But if I'm standing there and I'm, my balls are about to fucking explode and I'm doing a cop knock and you don't get out of the three flushes, man, what the fuck are you doing there? And so that guy's behind me and he's like, I don't know what's going on. I go, neither do I. This is fucked. I go, you know what? I'm gonna have to go get the fucking key. And as I'm doing this, a guy turns the corner. It's not an employee, but this guy is walking with purpose. He's coming right at me. And uh, he just, and I figure, all right, well, I got to stiffen up because this guy's going to throw me the fuck out of here or we're going to have an argument or whatever the fuck. And he walks up and he goes, oh, 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 oh. and he's, he's got his hands up. Like he's trying to defuse the situation. I go, no, sir. I, if you want to go, I understand we're waiting in line. And he goes, oh, 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 oh. and he, he produces a fucking key. And I go, oh, okay. All right. Well, I apologize. Yeah, please go. And he, and he opens the door. He goes, oh, oh, oh. he opens the door and another guy comes trailing him. So we open the door and we go in, me, the guy behind me, the guy with the key, and then the guy with the key's friend. We walk into the bathroom. There's nobody in there. Not a fucking soul. Just a, just must have been a shit ghost. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know what the fuck it could have been. But, uh, but as we're standing there, we all walk in four people barrel into the bathroom now with the fucking key. And I, and I'm not even, I'm not even in the mood to talk. I look and I see that there's nobody in there and I just immediately grab the urinal. I just fucking forget it. And I fucking pull out my cock and I'm just fucking going to work. And the, the one dude with the key comes up and he goes, hum, 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 hum. and, and I'm like, all right, now I'm like, all right, dude, I'm calm. Like he was, he was kind of simpering a little bit. Like you got to calm down and trying to get a message across. Like, dude, you really got, and I'm like, I said, sir, I understand. I know. I know you had the key. Thank you for letting me in. It's just, there were people I heard flushes and I thought someone was in here, but I had to get in here. And he's like, Whoa. and his friend comes over and he goes, Hey, you need to get a key at the front counter. And then the other guy holds the key up and I go, no, no, I understand that. I go, I went to the counter and they were very busy. So I came in the back and then I heard flushes. I thought somebody was in here and he goes, mm, 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 mm. and, uh, I kind of look at him again and I look at his friend and his friend goes, he's a deaf mute. And I'm like, oh fuck. Okay. And I glance over and the, the, the mute guy looks at me, he's like, mm, 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 and he holds the key up. And I'm like, I, I know, sir, I know. And I'm just nodding. And I'm look, I still got my cock in my hand. I'm standing at the urinal. I'm blasting the whole fucking time. This is a good, we got a good 75 seconds left of this. I mean, I'm, I'm unloading after six hours, but, uh, you know, I'm sitting with my cock in my hand, talking to these two guys. 
And uh, and his friend just goes, yeah, you have to stop at the counter and get a key. It's just it's just the way they do things here. I said, I dude, I I know, I understand, but I it was a kind of an emergency. He goes, all right, well, yes, but they uh, okay. So all right, you're, you're okay now. I go, yeah, I'm I'm fine. And I'm like, I don't know if these guys fucking work. They don't have the McDonald's outfits on. Uh, and they just kind of nod. And and uh, you know, the deaf mute guy's like smiling. He's <laughs> and he waves. And he's again incredibly nice. And I felt terrible that I left. I you know made people sad. And so he walks out, and they walk out. And the the guy who was behind me in line still walks out. I'm not even done, man. I'm unloading. And I finish and I walk my hand, I, you know, I go over, walk over and I wash my hands and throw some water in my face to calm the fuck down. And, uh, I walk outside and, and, and the second I walk outside, everybody looks at me, everyone, they, cause I can only imagine that the, all the other three dudes just walked out, like shaking their heads, like, holy fuck. And they all kind of exchange those weird glances you do when you've all been through a trauma together. <laughs> And they're all looking at one another like, yeah, fuck, that was scary, right? We all thought we were going to die. And then I walk out the door They all, and they all look up. They look at me. They don't want to look at me, but they have to look at me. That sort of thing where they kind of like, are we okay here? Is everything okay? And I, I walk out. I just take a step and I turn around and I look at everybody and I just go, hi. And, uh, and people laugh, some and some people don't. Uh, because they're all fucking still terrified. And I walk outside and I, I, and I have the, pl- look, I have the luxury of walking. That's the thing. Cause I was, I was hustling. There was pep in my step the whole fucking time before I got rid of everything. And now, you know, I'm 80 fucking gallons lighter. So I walk past Korean mummy. I walk outside, I get in my car and I'm like, all right, fuck. Cause I got to turn the app back on. And I usually, I run the gamut. I check my emails and I check my Twitter. Um, and I do that and I'm like, and my, I reflect on it. I go, fuck all those people, man. I, Jesus Christ, those people were fucking staring at me. And I'm like, you got to stop doing that. And I'm like, well, you know what? You were kind of justified, man, because, you know, you went there and you were just trying to use the restroom and you panicked a little bit. And because I do that thing now where I, I look at every incident where I could have behaved better and I try to talk myself through it and go, all right, what'd you do wrong in there? What'd you do wrong in there? Uh, how about the cop knock? Do you think that was that scared everybody motherfucker? Do you think shifting from foot to foot and starting to bitch about the fact that you couldn't get into the goddamn bathroom, you think that scared anybody? And in my head, I go, well, come on, man. You know what I mean? You give yourself a break. You were trying to use the restroom. What mistakes did you make? Well, you could have gone to the counter. You could have waited and politely asked for a key. Well, you know what? Physically, you didn't feel like you could do that. You felt there was a bit of an emergency and you had to get over there quickly. And so I'm weighing the pros and cons and I'm thinking, well, you know, I, I really, I'm not sure I did anything wrong here. I mean, certainly I went to the door and I got upset and I upset a room full of people, but at the same time, I didn't, I didn't lose my mind completely. I mean, I could have, but I didn't. And I take a beat and I think to myself, you know, you, you might think you didn't lose your mind completely. And I tell you guys this now, I might think that I didn't lose my mind completely. Certainly there are things I could have done better. I could have gotten a key. I could have calmed down. I didn't have to cop knock. I could have just waited to get into the restroom, all of those things. And, uh, I can tell you now that my behavior was not over the top and I can genuinely feel that in my heart, but that doesn't make it true. Just because I can tell you I feel something in my heart doesn't make it true because that's not the same as thinking it with your head. And the reality of the situation is that's old me behavior. You know, if I'm telling you that I made an entire McDonald's upset and worried and sad, and then I try to justify it by saying I didn't do anything wrong. Well, clearly I did something wrong. I mean, a room full of people sat there transfixed, wondering, worrying. And then that's me telling you, I, I feel in my heart that I didn't do anything wrong. Hey man, I bullshit. If I sit and I analyze on the way to the car, I sat in the car and I, I went, you know what, dude, you fucked this up. And I've always done that. I've always realized after the fact, you know, whether it's 15 seconds later or, or 20 minutes later or 15 hours later, I've always went, you know what? Fuck. You know, I've looked back and said, you know, I shouldn't have done that. And I'm doing a really good job now of not ever having those moments where I don't have to look back. You know what I mean? Those moments where I have to look back and go, oh, I could have handled that so much differently. In the, I've, I've been good about getting through and thinking beat by beat and, and trying to understand how a human being would act. Uh, but, but I reverted. I became a child because you know what? It, it's, and I, I guarantee you it was the shame of having to go to the bathroom and the shifting foot to foot and people in the room and me, me I'm like, I, I know what it was. It took me right back to the childhood shame of not being able to do something and being disrespected. And, and, and then the whole thing of having to pay to go to the bathroom and all these fucking, it's like basic human rights being taken away from, but it doesn't matter. You can explain it any fucking way you want. But the bottom like uh, line is, I can tell you, like I said, I felt genuinely in my heart, maybe I didn't do anything wrong, but I mean, an instant later I went, no, fuck you. You did something wrong, man. 
You know, just like when you went to the post office and you punched a hole in a fucking wall at a comedy club or when you paced back and forth in a bank and you made a whole room of people worry about what the fuck was going to happen with you, man, because you kind of liked the power trip of being in control in those situations. And, and the only control I had in this situation was to assert my dominance or my rage or to have presence and make an entire room notice me, think of me, fear me. And I'll tell you what, I'm pretty fucking good at that. I shouldn't be. I try to fucking table it and not be that guy anymore. I'm trying to put that instinct on a shelf. But let me tell you something, man. If you cast such a shadow of malevolence that not only does a room full of people worry about you, but a deaf mute forces himself to spring into action to defuse the situation, you're pretty good at thrusting your mood into everybody else's fucking life. And you're pretty good at controlling a room and showing them just exactly how displeased you are with the situation. And you need to you need to understand that power and you need to harness it and you need to stop. You need to stop. And I will. I will. I'm getting so much better about it going forward. I promise. I swear. And uh, and the day I kick it forever is probably the day I don't have the show anymore. Because who the fuck wants to hear about me being nice in a McDonald's? Nobody. Hey, I walked in. I saw a Korean woman. I put a quarter in her coffee cup. And I was friendly to everybody. Nobody fucking wants to hear that story. You want to hear about me almost killing a room full of fucking hobos, right? Right? You guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash The 40-Year-Old Boy. You can follow me at twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can be my uh, compadre. I don't know what they call them on Instagram and Snapchat. Follow me on Instagram and uh, and friend me. I suppose it is on Snapchat. I'm Mike four zero Y O B in both of those places. Mike four zero Y O B. And uh, also you can find me on the PS four. If you have a PlayStation four, the PlayStation network, I'm Mike four zero Y O B reach out and be my friend or add me or whatever they do there. I don't know if they do those things, but I tell people to do it anyway. And, and hopefully they're doing that. I don't know if you are, or you are not. Uh, we have the Twitch channel. Please remember the 40 year old boy Twitch channel, which features the super angry guy, Gene, happy, good time twitching hour. That is never an hour. It's often two. Um, no, it's always two often four, sometimes six. Uh, and we even do odd numbers as well. But if you can go ahead and be a follower on the Twitch channel, that'd be fantastic. It doesn't cost you anything, but you can also be a subscriber, a tier one, a tier two, a tier three subscriber on the Twitch channel. That would really help me out. And also if you're an Amazon prime customer, you can subscribe to me with the Twitch prime subscription, which you have to renew every month, but it doesn't cost you anything. Just the time it takes to find the, the, the button and click it. That's really all you need to do. That's the effort you need to put forward. And I appreciate you even thinking about doing that. So become a Twitch prime subscriber become a tier one, tier two, tier three subscriber and uh, watch my website on the media page. We're going to be having all you know streams listed and, uh, and we're tricking out the page and all these things. And, and look, I, I'm behind on my work in that instance. And I, I've tried to be better going forward, as you know, but I was very busy uh, with other things. <laughs> That's a lie. Probably. Uh, no, I just, I do the streaming, man. I'll do like six hours. And then afterwards I'm just like, whew, cause you know, I'm talking to people for six hours. I'm playing a video game, certainly, but at the same time, I got to be up and talk and there's strangers who pop into the chat room. It's a it's a process and it's being learned, but uh, I really want the page to be the best it can be. And I want to reach, uh, reach all the potential we possibly can. So go ahead and subscribe to the 40 year old boy Twitch channel. Uh, if you can be a follower at the very least, be a follower because that helps the numbers get up and it makes me very happy. Thank you. Thank you. Remember, the YouTube channel exists. Go to the Mike Schmidt Comedy. Uh, well, it's the 40-Year-Old Boy YouTube channel. So go to YouTube and subscribe to that, please, because it also lets YouTube know we're a hitter. And uh, and we generate uh, views and income over there as well. The Twitch clips are going up there. I know I keep threatening to do that, but it's just a matter of doing it, and I have to do it. I get that. I understand. Uh, it's But like I said, I do that thing where I go, all right, I'm off work today. And I walk away from the stream computer as I just fought through a yawn and talked and I bet you didn't even notice it. You probably did, but I went ahead and mentioned it anyway, because even if you didn't notice it, I want to make sure that you know about it because that's how I do. I tell you the things that just happened because in case you weren't listening, I hadn't paying attention. I had to go ahead and fucking describe to you my weakness. <sighs> Hi. So, uh, the YouTube channel exists. Go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. That'd be fantastic. Thank you so much. I appreciate you even thinking of us. Like I said, the Twitch channel, the YouTube channel, uh, look for 11 years, all you've done is hear me. But now you can see me while I'm talking and playing horse opera and all this other bullshit. So subscribe and Twitch, subscribe on uh, YouTube, and and we'll all be happy together as you get to stare at me and I get to see your disembodied chats flow by telling me I'm great. That's the key to this whole show business existence. I want to do a show just for you people. Uh, and that's what I consider Twitch. I consider Twitch a show. 
That's another reason why I don't go to the bathroom in the middle of it. You know what I mean? It's like I I have to fight off that urge if it even shows up because fuck, it's a TV show. Whether you're whether it is or it isn't, I can't put up a sign that says, "Hey, I'll be back." Well, if, you know what? If I had a sign, that would be fine. But usually, I, you know, I don't have a fucking sign. I just got me. So I can't look at people and go, I'll be right back. And then I shuffle off to the goddamn bathroom. I'm fucked. When you watched uh, like fucking Grey's Anatomy, does one of the doctors in the middle of an operating room go, hey, I got to go take a leak. I'll be right back. And he fucking bails. And they all sit, to sit around and wait for him. Fuck no. When you watch Cheers, the t- dance in 10 bar and go, hey, you know what? Everybody hold this down. I'll be right back. And he ran to the head. That never happened. So this is the Mike Schmidt, you know, the 40 angry, blah, 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 the 40 year old boy with the super angry guy, Gene, happy, good time twitching hour. I can't just leave in the middle of that show and leave y'all hanging. Although I did Sunday to go look at the blood moon last night, but that's fine. That's neither here nor there. I had to because everybody else in the chat room was like, dude, you got to see the blood moon. And then I went and saw the blood moon and it made me feel empowered that I was able to go and look at it. Just this red surrounding the moon. It felt me. It made me feel really big and really small at the same time, which I truly enjoyed. Uh, so YouTube channel, Twitch channel, those exist. Please subscribe. Uh, Ryan Dirks does all the web stuff for this show. He's the coolest. You can go ahead and find him at facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks. Be his friend on there. And as you know, all the music and all the artwork for this show is done by our fantastic friend, David Mex Hernandez. You can uh, be his friend at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez, where you'll see his Mex memes and you'll you'll see all the adventures of Gorilla Head, who he's come up with. And uh, you'll see his doggo. He's got his doggo, who actually has a uh, her own page. Rogue has her own page. But he also, he also shares... Uh, photographs, I guess, memes, whatever you want to call them, of our friend Rogue. But if you want him to do any artwork for you, like I said, he does all the artwork for me. And I'm sure he does artwork for Rogue because Rogue's very popular these days. But if you want to know what he can do for you, you want to know what Brown can, my front, my Brown Dave can do for you. That's my great friend, David. Uh, you know what you do? Here's what you do. You go to artbydmh.com. That's his art website, and it's it's really easy. You can see past work that he's done for listeners of this show. You can see his Valscapes. You can see his Gaicons. You can see all the work that he has uh, up portfolio-wise. You can see what styles he uses. I told you he works in watercolor. He works in oils. He works in whatever you need him to work in, You know, and you can con- uh, contact him. Try, try the Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Go ahead and try to get him through Facebook regarding projects or interest or pricing or anything that you would have to contact him through. You can get him through ArtByDMH.com too because I, I know he was really busy during the holidays. But maybe try both places, but I would try Facebook first. But if you want to go ahead and hire him to do a project, something, you know, say your mom's anniversary is coming up with your father and you want to get a nice painting of them to put over a mantelpiece or a fireplace, then by all means contact him for that. Or if you want just pictures of your doggos or you want, uh, you want him to paint superheroes, I mean, dude, dude, the fucking guy can paint you anything and make anything happen. It's fantastic. Please go ahead and find him. You can go to his website, artbydmh.com. You can contact him right there. Find out whatever artwork he can do for you and your friends and your family and everybody else that you know and love. Please send him a note uh, through facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. But first, go check out his website and see all the good works he can do for you. Artbydmh.com. That's A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H dot com. Your bullet when they go astray. 
What you gonna do now? The story is coming true. What you gonna do now when he goes away? He is deep inside his head again. He can't hear you anymore. You don't wanna be in there with him. Who will save you from his silver war? Yeah. Sponsors, we got them. Although I guess that's incorrect. Sp- I should say this. Sponsor, we got one. <laughs> Better than sponsors, we got them. Although I could say I've got many sponsors. Look, when you really get down to it, aren't all of you really sponsors of this show? Isn't it airing because of your kindness and generosity, whether you're giving me money or your ears or your time or whatever you want to describe it as? I'm going to call all of you sponsors. However, you are all severely lacking behind in the money you would pay me to be sponsors of this show. So I'm now unceremoniously ripping the sponsor tag off all of your official 40 year old boy jackets and I'm handing them all to our good friend, Fearful Jesuit. That's right. Fearful Jesuit runs the Paranoid Strain podcast, available now in the iTunes store. Go ahead and download it. Go ahead and subscribe to it. Go ahead and leave a review for it there in the iTunes store, talking about how much you love it, and you love me, and you love Fearful Jesuit, and you love bananas. He wants to hear about your bananas. You know, a lot of those people in those in the shows are bananas, but also he loves bananas as a fruit. He actually, he loves plantains. He loves any cock-shaped fruit, any, anything at all. Go ahead. Any cock-shaped produce is, is on board. Cucumbers, he loves them. Uh, very, very uh, tiny string beans, of course. Why not? Go ahead and tell Fearful Jesuit in all of your reviews how much you love cock-shaped fruit with him. Don't do that, because I'd like to keep the one sponsor I have after I just tore all of the patches off of all of your jackets and told you you guys are no longer sponsors. The Paranoid Strain Podcast is available in the iTunes store right now. Uh, the episode that is available, you know, he again, he paces these out. I... I churn out content. I'm not nearly as discerning as our friend Fearful Jesuit. You know, I just got, I'm just here babbling into a microphone every goddamn week. And now every goddamn day, if you count my fucking horse opera. But uh, our friend Jesuit, he takes his time. He, baby, he can do it. Takes the time. Does it right. He can do it. Jesuit does it all night. Uh, he puts together a show with him and his good friend uh, Dana. And they go ahead and churn out all sorts of things. Like, where else are you going to hear a show where they mention, uh, 
uh, Aristoteles, 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 I, I'm guessing at the pronunciation of that. I'm probably pretty, I'm, I think I'm going to be off. Pythagoras, how about that? I should just go with that. That's easy to say. Uh, you can hear about Pythagoras. Uh, and you can also hear about uh, like a who's on first thing. It, it, it's not really. It was an argument. Uh, never mind. Forget it. I think I've already described it in other shows. However, right now, the Flat Earth show, a show is still in the iTunes store. And uh, go ahead, but there's so many backlogged ones that you can go ahead and listen to and listen to them over again. Because, again, you just listen to the production, listen to how crisp it is, listen to how great our, our friend Jesuit is at what he does. And, and subscribe, because the new one is coming down the pike soon, very soon. Oh, my Christ, how soon? So soon. Uh, but that is the sponsor of this show, the Paranoid Strain Podcast, available now in the iTunes store. Contact them also at theparanoidstrain at gmail.com and tell them you love them. And uh, tell them we sent you and put it in the reviews. And, and, and please don't bring up that plantain, banana, cucumber, string bean thing, because that was probably a mistake. I would still like to get paid. <laughs> Folks, do you have cameo? Let me ask you this. Not a cameo. Not that thing that looks like oil of Olay, that little fucking uh, pendant or whatever the fuck it is that ladies have. No, I'm talking about cameo, the app on your phone where you can hire me to go ahead and call your family or your friends and tell them nice things about you or them or tell them terrible things about you or them. Now, look, I, you know, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not very popular on cameo. As I yawn and you're, uh, you're, you're, that's why, you know, that's exactly why I'm not popular on fucking cameo. Oftentimes I'll bust out a cameo and then all of a sudden I start yawning in the middle of it. And they're like, this fucking guy doesn't even care. But I'll tell you what, I've done cameos and I don't think I've done one less than five minutes just yet. I've seen other people put up their cameos and it's like a minute long, 30 seconds, 10 seconds of somebody sitting at a desk going, happy birthday. Remember me? That's basically what cameo is all about. <laughs> happy birthday. Remember me? Hey, happy anniversary. Remember me? Your wife wanted to fuck me. That's see, that's like if I was still with Karen, I could go ahead and hire Leif Garrett to do a, a cameo and he would he would do a cameo for her. And she'd be like, oh, dreamy. Uh, and if I was with my other exes, I've got plenty of other names I could probably pull up. I, if, I, if I was dating my other ex, Stephanie, um, she had a big thing for <laughs> Sebastian Bach from Skid Row a million years ago. So I would hire Sebastian Bach to talk to Stephanie. Um, and, I, and let's not run down the whole list. Nobody wants to hear the whole litany of exes. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I can tell you who I would not hire to hire for my exes. Me. I would not book me to say anything to them because they'd be like, this is the worst gift you've ever given me, quite frankly. Uh, so please go to Cameo and download the app onto your phone and then hire me to tell your friends or your family that you love them or you hate them. And I'm happy to do it for the money you're paying. And again, like I said, there's big names on there, man. All sorts of bugging because uh, this is spreading all over the world. Like it started out as a small idea and I used to joke about it. I'm like, oh, good. Clippers, bench warmers and me. Well, now there's fucking big time names on there. And me, I'm still there. I'm lurking. I'm in the weeds. Nobody gets to me because you got to cover through all of the other fucking popular people with a machete to get to the 14th page of names. But I'm there. If you want to go ahead and have me in your life, you want to have me uh, drop a five minute message to somebody about something, please find me on the Cameo app, download it from the iTunes store, put it on your phone right now, or uh, whatever you do with an Android. How do you do that? Do you just... Yeah, you light a fire and throw up smoke signals. How do they put apps on your phone if you've got an Android? Do they? Do you have to tap your phone three times and then sleep with it while underneath you? And like, like put it under the mattress and hope in the morning it's something. Like, you know, maybe you put it under your pillow. Maybe you do that. I was going Princess and the Pea. Instead, I go fucking App Fairy. You, you just place your Amazon. You push a couple of buttons in a complicated sequence, like an 18 letter and number code. Put it on your pillow. And then in the middle of the night, the app fairy comes and she all of a sudden puts cameo on your phone and then you can hire me. And you know what? Here's what you do. You hire me to give a thank you note to the app fairy for putting me on your goddamn phone. I love this. It's circuitous. So please get cameo, hire me, and I'll tell anybody whatever the fuck you want me to tell them because I'm that kind of a whore. <laughs> Who wants to drive for Uber and Lyft? Is it you? Is it you? I think it is. Uber and Lyft are out there. You know, I have a code. Did you? If you want to drive for Lyft, or if you want to ride with Lyft, you know, if it's a first time ride, you can use my code. And these are all caps. M-I-K-E-7-2-0-5-7. That's Mike 720057. And that's double zero. Mike 720057. That's your code if you're a first time rider. That's your code if you're signing up to be a driver. Because then I get to be your Uber pimp and I get to skim something off of you, man. It's fucking fantastic. So that's for Lyft. All caps, Mike 720057. Now for Uber, totally different. They go, they go lower case, baby. D-J-Z-W-1-Y-T-T-U-E. That's D-J-Z-W, the number one, Y-T-T-U-E. And then you can become an Uber passenger or an Uber driver, and I get to take uh, take a rake. I get to take some of the rake. Whatever you do, I get spiffed, and I'm happy to do it because, you know, that's what I'm doing, man. I'm a, I, Every day I'm hustling, hustling. Got hands in pockets. I'm leaving happy birthday messages over here. I'm, I'm, I'm tricking the world and having Uber drivers and Uber riders over there. I'm playing video games and, and, and thanking you when you send me bits and cheers over there. 
<laughs> you know, I'm like a I'm like a Jamaican of shitty jobs. You always see those. You always hear that thing. Oh, that guy's got like 14 jobs, and it was like, oh my god, that guy never sleeps. I got news for you, man. One of my job is sleeping. That's exactly it. I I hire. There's some guys who've hired me to just sleep, and they get to watch me while I do it. Now they can't touch me. That's extra. Uh, but please go ahead and hire yourself to be an Uber and Lyft driver and use my code. Or if you want to drive, if you want to ride, whatever you want to do. If you want to get anywhere within the proximity of somebody else's Uber or Lyft car, or you want to turn your car into an Uber or Lyft chariot, please use my code for Lyft, all caps, Mike72057, for Uber, all lowercase, DJZW1YTTUE. Now, look, I already told you about this before, but we got the YouTube channel. Go ahead and subscribe to that. We got the Twitch channel, which I love doing. Uh, I play video games. I'll be streaming. I'm off today. Again, Monday's podcast day, but I'll be streaming tomorrow. I'll be streaming Wednesday. I'll be streaming the rest of the week. I stream every day except Monday. Sometimes it's long. Sometimes it's short. Sometimes we uh, go hard. Sometimes we go soft. Sometimes we do this and then we do that. Sometimes we do the opposite. Whatever the fuck. Come watch me play video games. It's fantastic. Go ahead and leave. All right. I'll tell you what, even if you don't want to do this. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to make you do something else anyway. Be a follower. It doesn't cost you anything to go to Twitch and follow me. So go ahead and be a, because uh, then it gives Twitch the idea I'm a hitter. If I've got a certain number of followers and it's increasing exponentially, uh, I'm an affiliate now. I want to try to be a partner. So go, man, go follow me, uh, create a Twitch channel, create it. Th- and, and if you follow me, that's great. It helps me out. And again, you don't even have to come and watch, although it is fun if you come and watch. We've been getting uh, anywhere near like 80 people in there to watch me and stuff. And that's pretty good because I'll tell you what, I need to average 75 to get the, the, the fucking money. I told you this already, but I, I'm just going to, I'm excited. I'm pretty excited. So we'll see what uh, tomorrow brings tonight. Yeah. Again, no, Monday we're off Monday's podcast day, but tomorrow, however, we're very busy doing important things on, on Twitch. Um, you know, you can go to Mike Schmidt Did you know that? I think you did. Uh, you go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com, you got all sorts of cool-ass pages there. But the, the merch page is the one I'm telling you about right now, the Joe Business page, which is the merchandise page. And if you go on there, there's all sorts of things for sale that you can get that you probably already have. But more importantly, the Amazon link lurks there. That's right, the Amazon link. It is there, it is looming, it is shining like a beacon in the night, and it is telling you, hey, go ahead and use me, because it doesn't cost you anything. That's the deal. You get there, you click on the Amazon link, it costs you five seconds. And then we get money, they get money, you get stuff. It works out perfectly. It costs you abs- It costs you zero. Five seconds of your life to find the link, click on it, then you're in Amazon already, swimming around like a fish in a, in a, a sea of products, and you're buying this, you're buying that, and you're swallowing some of it whole like plankton. And all the while, I'm getting credit. Whenever you ping a button, whenever you send anything my way, whenever you send anything your way, when you send anybody anybody's way, a gift, when you send somebody a gift on Amazon, you buy yourself something fancy on Amazon. As long as you're using my link, I'm going to get credit. And you know what that means? We get money, they get money, you get stuff. It works out perfectly for everybody involved. As I've mentioned, it's symbiotic. It's very triangular. It's, uh, it's three hands grabbing three wrists in a power move. And you get a product, we get money, they get money. Everybody's happy. Everybody in the goddamn world. So please, use our Amazon link. That's at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. It is right there on the merchandise page. Use it uh, or fucking lose it, huh? <laughs> All right. Cash, grass, or ass. Nobody rides for free. Um, no, no, I'm sorry. Gas, grass, or ass. Jesus Christ. Look at me saying fucking cash. I, I, I fucked up my own saying. Well, that's not my own saying. I didn't come up with that motherfucking thing. What if I did? I was four. I came up with cash, grass, or ass. And everybody's like, no, man, it's gas, grass, or ass. I'm like, fuck that, man. I came up with the cash one. Uh, although I said I fucked up my own saying, so I guess I would have come up with gas, grass, or ass. And then I ruined it here with cash. You know, fuck it. I say cash, gas, cash, gas, fuck, I can't even. Cash, gas, grass, or ass. Nobody rides for free. Cash, gas, grass, or ass. Nobody rides for free. Cash, ca- cash, gas, grass, ass. Nobody rides for free. I wish you could see this in the audacity because they all look exactly the same. That is because I'm repeating it. So all the lines look, uh, they just look solid. They look good. They look, they look really good. Hey, I got a Patreon page. I think I mentioned it earlier, but I'll mention it again, because if you want to support this nonsense, why wouldn't you? Uh, Like our good friend, Ryan Gilbreth, who stepped up and became a patron on Patreon this past week. Ryan, you're the coolest. Have I mentioned that before? I think I have. You are one of the best persons in the whole goddamn world, and I'm happy to have you on board supporting this show and making it possible for me to not climb behind the wheel of a car for another five minutes a goddamn week. But you're the best. Ryan Gilbreth. And if you want to join Ryan and be praised up and down by me, if you want to get a verbal hand job from me on this goddamn show, then become a patron of Patreon, for fuck's sake. Like our good friend, Ryan Gilbreth. Have I mentioned his name enough? I don't think I have. Ryan Gilbreth is now a patron at Patreon, and uh, and he's supporting supporting this enterprise. He's supporting this whole fucking thing. Some of you guys just sitting around listening for 20 fucking years and you're not, not even raising a finger. 
You're off by you're at Starbucks. You're buying your lattes and you're off buying your tuna sandwiches and you're not uh, helping out your boy Mike, your internet chum. Come across with some green or some silver or some gold, some gold to help your internet chum. You know who does? Ryan fucking Gilbreth. That's who does. So thank you, Ryan. I appreciate you stepping up. But thank you all. You know I'm teasing, folks. If you want to support, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. But if you want to, go to the Patreon page. That's the uh, I think it's patreoncom slash mike 40 yob possibly. But if you just Google Mike Schmidt Patreon, it's going to come up unless all of a sudden the baseball player is fucking broke and he went ahead and threw something on there. How great would that be? Hey, I'll send you mustache photos for five dollars a month. Fuck you, Schmitty. Uh, other Schmitty, more popular Schmitty. Certainly not funnier Schmitty, but only more popular only because people know him from his baseball exploits. If they got to know him as a person, they'd be like, ah, where's that loudmouth Jagoff from Chicago? That's our favorite Mike Schmidt. That's our true Internet chum. And I'm there for you, folks. Don't kid yourselves. Uh, <laughs> so if I told you everything, Amazon, yeah, I think I, I think we're covered, man. I covered all the streaming, a couple of Patreon, I uh, you know all, I covered David before the break. Um, I mentioned I saw a movie. Did I get into detail? I can't remember. See, this is the problem, man. I I, I fucking spit out. We're almost two hours in, and I can't remember what the fuck I talked about. But I saw a movie over the weekend. I saw the movie Glass. Uh, I saw the movie Glass made by M M Night Shyamalan. And uh, he was there directing Up a Storm, along with your friends Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson. And uh, who's the other guy? Our good friend uh, James McAvoy, who I got to tell you this. This is I, this is totally true. I, uh, you know, I saw this movie yesterday morning, like 930. And I can't stop thinking about James McAvoy's flyaway eyebrows. First of all, his performance was fantastic. I did not see Split. Now I want to see Split, even though. I saw critics destroying glass and they're saying, oh, James McAvoy sets back the performance of uh, of men of, you know, people with mental disabilities by years with this. Oh, shut the fuck up. It's a fucking movie about a fucking guy who turns into a beast. What the fuck is your problem? It doesn't it doesn't speak to real people and their problems. For fuck's sake, it's got it's got Bruce Willis in a fucking poncho with super strength and Samuel L. Jackson wearing a knockoff purple suit and having bones made of fucking drywall. I mean, Jesus, fuck. How are you going to hold anybody to some fucking realistic standard? I'm so tired of it. This Dudes, this fucking happened last week. I got to share this with you. Fucking, they announced that they're doing a Coming to America 2. Now, I will not believe that shit until it's in the theater. Like, I I can't, I want to see it. I'm so excited. Other people are just like, oh, God, I can't believe they're doing it. Fuck you, man. If everybody's on board, if Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, James fucking Earl Jones, John Amos, how, how could you not want to see that? That's fucking fantastic. Just for the barbershop scenes alone, for fuck's sake. If those guys are still alive, how great would that be? Eddie Murphy's a comic genius. He's a fucking comedic genius. Go see him do anything. Uh, uh, except for Nutty Professor movies and farts. But still. Um, so Coming to America 2 is announced. And it's because he's working with the guy. Uh, Eddie Murphy did a, a movie, a Dolomite movie for, for Netflix. And uh, everybody's like, well, so this guy, Craig Brewer, is the guy who pitched him on the idea of coming to America, too, and he's going to write or direct it. So Deadline Hollywood puts out a tweet, or maybe The Hollywood Reporter, and it just had a picture of Eddie Murphy. It had a picture of Craig Brewer, and it said, coming to America, too, slated uh, sequel, you know, slated for possible whatever. And uh, the first Twitter response, the first Twitter response is from... Yeah, I'll just because I got to tell you this, you know, it's got a picture of Eddie Murphy. It's got a picture of this Craig Brewer guy. I don't I don't know this fucking guy at all. I don't know anything about him, but I do know from the picture. He's a white guy, a kind of a cherubic face, you know, whatever the fuck. And, and obviously, Eddie Murphy likes working with him because if he worked off Dolomite and then wanted to do this first Twitter response, some white dude from fucking Connecticut or somewhere. I don't, I don't know, somewhere in the fucking world. And he just writes, why wasn't a person of color considered to direct this film? How about you put the phone down, you walk out to your car, you start it, and you just push down the gas, and you drive straight into whatever the fuck's in front of you and blow up. Just fucking blow up and get burnt to a fucking crisp. How dare you presume to tell anybody how to fucking do their job, who to fucking work with, just because you're saying, and and again, this wasn't like some critic or some writer or somebody who has a stake in the movie business. No, this is some fuckwad with like 40 followers in Rhode Island somewhere who's probably getting you a fucking uh, a coffee or or he's working in a library. And look, everybody's got to make a fucking uh, buck. Everybody has a job and whatever the fuck, but don't stay in your fucking lane. And that's the problem again with social media. Everybody's got a fucking voice. Everybody got a megaphone and they think they can fucking use it. Who the fuck are you to tell Eddie Murphy who he should fucking work with? And how are you to shit on Craig Brewer? If the Dolomite movie's genius, what the fuck do you care who got the fucking job? And again, this is a white dude. Like, it wasn't even a Latina person or, or, or another person of color. If it was somebody like who had a vested interest, I could maybe see it. And I would certainly take them more seriously. 
But some fucking white nobody from the middle of nowhere, Snowtown, fucking Captain Mayonnaise with sentient fucking thumbs, types out fucking person. God, dude, fuck you, dude. Fuck you. I, I'm so sick of it. God damn, I'm sick of it. Why well, wasn't a person of color to direct this? Fuck you. Stutter somewhere else, you fuck. I hate people. I don't understand it. Why would you give them the voice? Why would you let him even talk? And why would he choose to do that with his voice? It's like they're making a new Ghostbusters. And now everybody's freaking out the fuck uh, over that shit. And I, I don't even, I just say, you know, don't fucking watch. They're announcing the Oscars this week. I can't even imagine what the fuck's going to happen over that. If they give, you know, some, some if they don't nominate like fucking Black Klansman or Black Panther or something, I'm sure people are going to be upset. Or if they do nominate it, people are going to be upset. Whatever the fuck. Live your life, man. Go read a book and be happy. Just do something with your life. Hi. This is the bitter end of the show. <laughs> the point is I saw glass and, uh, and look, I did. I, did I love it? I did not love it. I did like it. Uh, did I laugh at a lot of it? Yeah. Me and Pat spent a lot of time looking at one another, like, come on and rolling our eyes, but who fucking cares? It was great. It was a fun time at the movies and we enjoyed it. Is it, I'm like, look, all right, let me rephrase. Is it a great movie? No. Was it a fun time at the movies? It was. Because there's a lot of corny shit and a lot of dumb stuff and then a lot of cool stuff. And then it's like, I'm just happy that M. Night Shyamalan got to tell this story. I'm just happy that he was able to tell this fucking story because obviously he really wanted to tell it. So I'm glad he did. And, uh, and I'm not going to spoil anything. I had a good time. At one point, I leaned over to Pat and I just went, hey, uh, Samuel L. Jackson can never die. And he's like, I know, right? And I go, he can never die. And he goes, well, he's got to be like 60. I go, dude, he's 70 fucking years old. That's the truth. Samuel L. Jackson is 70. How the, I mean, you can't even, he's been around forever. You've never missed him, but he's also never changed. He doesn't look any different. He's always also, cause he's always in a wig or he's in some, some, some silly. I mean, he always looks different in his movies. He's bald or whatever the fuck 70 fucking years old. He can't die. We need, we, is there some sort of Samuel L. Jackson, uh, motherfucking bubble wrap? We can, we can <laughs> go ahead and, and patent to roll him up so he can be safe for the rest of his fucking life. If they're literally, if they are going to make one person a cyborg that they keep together, if they're working on AI or fucking any sort of artificial humanity bullshit, they, they got to do it with him. He's the guy. Samuel L. Jackson is the best of all of us. He is the best we can hope for as a race. So let's fuck it. I mean, a human race, not even like I'm talking, I don't even color I'm talking as a human race. He's the best human we can hope for. Fuck your Albert Schweitzer's fuck your fucking uh, diplomats. Fuck your guys who are, uh, who knows climate change and scientists. Samuel L. Jackson is the best of all of us. Let's keep, make sure he stays alive fucking forever, forever. 70. Jesus, that threw me for a goddamn loop. So I left and I'm driving Pat home and we're talking and uh, he's talking about movies because he, you know, he sees fucking everything, man. He sees all the movies in the goddamn world. And and so we get in the car and he's talking about this. And I'm like, I didn't see that. I didn't see that because he's talking about the Oscars coming up, you know, and he's like, what are they going to nominate? And he's like, I don't know. I, you know, he didn't like Roma and whatever the fuck. There's things he didn't like. So we got around to the subject of the movie you've never seen that people would be shocked you've never seen. Like something you were supposed to see, you should have seen by now that you have not seen. And I, I know my answer. My answer to that is always, uh, well, first, let me tell you Pat's. I'll tell you Pat's first. Pat's answer. Well, Pat goes, because uh, I asked him, I go, I was talking about Blazing Saddles. I go, yeah, man. I go, it's fun. I go, uh, you know, playing this Red Dead game, you know, it's kind of fun. It's, a, you know, and there's a Blazing Saddles vibe or whatever. And he goes, I've never seen that. And I just, dudes, I just stared at him. And I go, what the fuck are you talking about? He goes, I've never seen Blazing Saddles. Oh, I. you know why? Here why. I was referencing the fact that the N-word is said all throughout it because we were talking about movies with the N-word in it. And I said, uh, and I said, you've not seen Blazing Saddles. I go, they, they're, they, it's so, I go, it's fucking genius. It's so goddamn funny. It's one of the funniest movies ever made. He's like, yeah, I just never, you know, and I go, I'm, I'm coming to your house. Literally, I'm coming to your house and we're watching it. I'm making you watch it. You can't get out of it. And he's just laughed. He's like, well, I, okay. Or whatever. But I, but also he was very sheepish, which made me think he does not want to see it, which is fucking weird to me, but also not weird because you know me, I, I, when a time has passed, I don't really need to see something. If I'm like, oh man, that I can't, if I didn't see it in a the theater and I, when the zeitgeist was happening, I kind of don't want to see the fucking thing. Um, so then we were talking some more and I'm just like, I can't believe you didn't see that. And da, 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 we're talking, then we're talking about Trump because that's what inevitably he and I wind up talking about. And I said, uh, yeah, man, I go, it's just, it's like network, you know, that scene in network. And he goes, uh, and I looked at him, I go, don't you dare, don't you fucking dare. And he goes, uh, well, I, I've seen bits and pieces, which is a lie that, that just means 
he knows the mad as hell scene. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know, I know that's his way around it. I go, you have to see this movie. It literally set the template for everything that's going on now. The fact it, it, it predicts the beginning, the, the invention of reality TV and then the melding of reality TV with the government. I go, dude, you have to fucking see this movie. Ned Beatty's speech alone should have, would, would win best picture this year. I mean, you have, how have you not seen that? So now I got to text Pilar because I'm going to, cause she's, you know, she teaches screenplay stuff. I want to write her and just go, how are you married to a guy who's never seen Blazing Saddles or Network? How are that's, because now that's on you. You got a shirt of that guy to a fucking television screen, especially when you're somebody who's so knee deep in the movie industry. You got to fucking grab him and go, hey, man, you got to see this just just for reference points. So then I asked him, I go, do you see face in the crowd? He goes, oh, yeah, Andy Griffith. I go, okay, good. as long as you saw face in the crowd, then you kind of, that's fine. I won't yell at you. But I mean, dude, Network and Blazing Saddles. How have you not seen him? And he's like, well, what is your movie? I, and I always have the same answer, and I know it for sure. And it's uh, it's Schindler's List. And he goes, you never saw Schindler's List? I go, no, I didn't see Schindler's List. I go, that's not exactly a movie you run out to fucking see. I go, but the thing is, too, you need to see it in a movie theater. And honestly, with that sort of fucking topic or whatever the fuck you want to describe it as, uh, that subject matter, you want to see it in a movie theater, but also you don't want to see it in a movie theater because then you're surrounded by like 300 people sobbing. I mean, I don't know if that's a fucking thing I want to do, and I've done it before, and I don't mind it, and I'm not scared of it, but it just doesn't seem like that. That that doesn't even rise to the level of import, seeing it in a movie theater. Schindler's List should be seen... I don't know, in a museum or just, or, you know, they should just beam it into the sky and you watch it on passing clouds because it's just so fucking important, right? And I didn't see it at the movie theater. So then when I didn't see it at the movie theater, I absolutely wasn't going to watch it at home because that just seems incredibly disrespectful. I'm just, just cause, uh, cause who makes that choice? Who's at home and just goes, all right, well, you know, let's tune into tragedy. Why don't we do that? Let's throw up the, the fucking story of the Nazis and check that out in our house. And there's no, because if you're in, you're in. If you're fucking watching that movie at your house, because again, like I said, at the theater, you're sitting there. That's fine. No escape. They run it, and you're just you're you're. It's essentially you know what you're you're in kind of a camp of your own there, and you're. But at least you're bonding with your fellow prisoners because you're watching that movie unfold, and you're crying and sobbing, you're leaning on people and holding hands, and holy shit. But if you're home alone, you know your instinct, as you know when you watch a movie at home, anyways, to just you're at your house, so you do whatever the fuck you want. I can't look at my phone in the middle of Schindler's List. And, and what am I going to do? I can't go use the restroom. You can't pause the Holocaust. Who the fuck pauses the Holocaust? I'm watching the movie, and all of a sudden there's a guy, and then I see there, you know, 40 skinny dudes and a bulldozer. I'm like, well, I know what the fuck's going to happen here. And then there's just like a pile of gold teeth, and I'm like, hold on, you know what? Put that on. I'm going to go make some popcorn, honey. Go ahead and fucking put the pause button on. Holy shit. You can't fucking make that happen. That's how disrespectful. I would, I would hope to be haunted by Hitler's ghost if I ever watched Schindler's List and then paused it to get a bottle of water and a fucking bag of chips. I deserve to be, you know, but throw me in fucking Auschwitz at that fucking point or reopen the joint reopen the joint and throw me in there because I deserve that kind of special punishment I deserve to be thrown in there and just with that movie running on a loop I'll just be like a fucking display in Ready? You don't come to a throne if you're not gonna suck a dick. Hey, 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 hey.